Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, Tyvis Powell, Jason Lloyd. Plus, ba da 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 you're loving him, Mikey McNuggets. And so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. The ultimate Cleveland sports show starts now. Booyah! Welcome, everybody, to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. I think this is the uh, first time in as long as I can remember that every host on the show, and today it's three of us, me, Tyvis, and G, we're all here at least 30 minutes before the show. It's crazy. That the, when's the last time that happened? I don't know, man. That's been like... Did, did, me, you and Jason, did, the did me, you, and Jason do that? No, oh, it was me, McNuggets, and Jason. Ah. We did that. But that's rare, too, because Jason usually comes late, G usually comes late, yeah. and Jay usually comes late. Jay. You get here early. J- Tyvis, because he's got a... Tra- Tyvis travels five hours to get here every day. <laughs> that's crazy. You live in Kentucky, bro. Yeah. I mean, you might as well. <laughs> you know what was sad, yeah. though? As I was driving up today, it started snowing. I know. And I'm just like, that's why I said I'm moving to, oh, ja- I'm moving to Jamaica. Yeah. I'm moving yeah, I to know. Jamaica with my pop. I'm sick Do you of have that. dual citizenship? No, I need to get one. I could get it, too. And I just, I have it. I'm lazy when it comes to stuff like that. Hey, Jamaicans can't be lazy. Remember when they're living color? They're like, I'm Jamaican, man. You're right, because I got five I'm jobs, so jobs. I ain't lazy. Yeah, right. I not describe you as lazy. I'm just not committed to doing it right now. I mean, it's fine. You don't really want to move to Jamaica. Who are you kidding? To Jamaica, man. Time to be with what my people. What are you going to do? You have to give them all time. your jobs. No, you could, I can stream this. What are you talking about? I can do it from the house. You couldn't do Big Ten Network from there? You I couldn't, couldn't do the Big Ten from there, but I could do the radio from there. You couldn't do your... Just give me a... Uh, you couldn't do the collective? What's the thing called? A Comrex. Give me a Comrex. You know the internet's infrastructure you don't even down there. They got internet down there. The inter- what are you talking internet about? Internet's trash down there. If the, with, the, with the jobs that I have, I'll make sure that I have some good <laughs> internet. To be living in a mansion in uh, Jamaica. No, Stop playing. <laughs> He's gonna get robbed in Jamaica. Did uh, I tell you I was on my? Uh, I was I was on I was on my honeymoon. Who, who's your Montego Bay? Man, Montego Bay. Somebody die every day. Man, I was down there. I was there, I was in the in, in resort, and the resort had to go. With, my ex wife forgot to tell the bank that we was out of the country, uh. and then all we had no bread. So then they go, she going to sign me up. She going to sign me up. It was me and this Chinese dude and the Indian dude in this van driving <coughs> back to the center of the city to get this money out this ATM. <laughs> but they have like but an armed guard. But it's the thing, though. In Jamaica, they don't mess with the tours. So they don't because if you mess with the tours, like they like you like jail. You see like kill like death. Type hey, ability. listen, I'm a civilian. I don't got no gang ties, and I will tell on you in a heartbeat. I'm a civilian. I'm not going to jail. They dropped me you, off, you, though. You, you a, your tail? Yeah, yeah, I'm telling everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, He's going to wet snitch. It, it, what no, is no, it was him. <laughs> and really? He, and he was an accomplice. <laughs> I signed a statement. But no, nah, they dropped me off at, by this Burger King in, in this ATM because this it, I felt kind of slighted. He said, hey, man, I got to go pick up the uh, the Asian guy. I said, so you going to drop me off <laughs> and, go pick, up and go pick the Asian dude up? Well, I'm going to just ride with you. No, they're not going to do nothing to you, bro. There's armed guards out in front of the ATM. They're not yeah. going to do nothing with the to AK-47. You. Yeah, they. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what, <laughs> that's what, easy for you to say. He they, was there. I'm like, they're not going to do nothing to you. I'm well, telling how you. Know how do I know? Time. You should, I'm telling you, they're not gonna do. But you're telling them now. This was a long time ago. And then you I don't. Well, you shouldn't have been scared. I don't like people coming up to me. I don't like everybody want to come up to me. Hey, Amen. And hey, listen, I got. Hey, come over here. I got something for you. No, you don't got nothing for me. I'm sitting by the Burger King. Just say I'm good. I'm sitting by the Burger King. Leave me alone. Tell them I'm good. I gave two people twenty dollars. I said you. That's like a thousand dollars in Jamaica. Buddy. You and your henchmen split this up and get away from me. That's sad. <laughs> did you did you eat at the Burger King though? No, I oh, was not. I, I don't. I listen. I didn't eat nothing yeah. off the resort. I got back to the resort, barricaded myself in. Yeah, me, it was cool. You know what? Speaking of snitching, hold on. Before yeah. we go into sports, I need to ask you a question. <laughs> uh, me? Yeah. You, okay. So I was I was on the internet yesterday, mm-hmm. and <laughs> it was this dude. It's some Chicago stuff. You know, King Von. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, Did wait. you see the dude that like completely snitched on him? 
Uh, he said that King Von shot my sister and shot me in the leg. And he said, I'm going to tell it because he did anyway. It's not like y'all yeah. didn't do anything. Well, yeah, he yeah. shot somebody. Yeah. Shouldn't he be snitched on? No. What do you mean, this no? Is, this is street code. No, that's bad. Street code. That's bad for society. <laughs> can, even, if they, even if they shot you point blank, you can't, you're not supposed Act, to say. Actually, you the can't truthful. say that man it, did it. Here's, <laughs> here's, let, let's what ex- they say. Let's explain <laughs> snitching very quickly before <laughs> yeah. we can get on to the other. I just want to know, is it okay to snitch on the dead? Uh, well, listen, if it, was he involved in any crimes with King Vine? Who? The guy who snitched. He was the victim. Is he? A, is he? A, is he a gangbanger? Yes. Oh, uh, well, in that case, he can snitch. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the way it works: If you and I are criminals, right? Yeah. Criminals <laughs> don't tell on other criminals. Okay. And if the cops ask anything, even if we enemies, yeah. I'm not supposed to say anything. That's but, right. But but here's the way it works, bull. When they yeah. offer you when you offer you football years, yeah, they offer you football years, 86, 87, 90 years in jail. People usually snitch. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, usually come out. That's and a fact. The end, that's a fact. End, well, I don't know. That's a whole other story for another day. We, we got plenty of football <laughs> topics to get to. to we got some Cavs. The Cavs are the Cavs are. Let's face it. They're in big trouble here with this Donovan Mitchell situation. We'll get to that later. We're going to get to the the Brown signing 82 quarterbacks later. Mm. Mm. Uh, Ohio Mike State. Rabel. What are we doing with Ohio Mike State? Rabel. The NIT. Tyvis is excited about that. We'll talk that. I'm not overcome. excited about that. I wanted to be in the regular day. The fact that I Ohio State. Let's face it. They're a, they're a, they're a national disgrace when it comes to college. We're, 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 we are national a, disgrace right now. We are a women's basketball team. Yeah, right women's basketball. It's a legit program. Men's basketball. They might as well drop out of Division One. Whoa. Because they're not whoa. Taking, they're not Whoa! They're not taking things seriously. What do you mean? They they, I, Dude. <laughs> I heard they Illinois. only got a collective for old state every dopey, <laughs> school, actually they do. every dopey school in the Big Ten is paying more money to their coach than Ohio State. That's embarrassing. We'll get to I don't even know if we'll get to that. And we got John Fanta at 1230. So Mike is losing his show. mind on the other side of the glass. Hey, so can, 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 before can, we talk about all these quarterbacks that we're going to get to, keep let's, talking. See, let's see what Mike has to say. What can do you got, me, Mike? G. Yeah, I got you. Good. All right, there Good. we go. Good. All right, we're going to get into topics. we got a lot to get to today. Very excited. But first, a word from FanDuel. You can say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel is letting you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and bet on college <laughs> until they cut the nets down. And today's winning ticket comes from our guy Lamont No Sanford, who's on a heater. Three winning tickets in the last two weeks he Damn. sent in. He turned 50 bucks into 833 bucks what? this week Ooh. on a four-part parlay using the spreads. He had Brown plus seven and a half, Auburn minus five and a half, UAB minus seven and a half, and Illinois minus two and a half. All four of those hit. He turned fifty bucks into eight hundred thirty-three bucks. So shout out to you, Lamont No Sanford at Mont Dag R eight. Appreciate you sending Lamont, the Lamont, you better start sending the parlays through. Man, come on, bro. Uh, we're going to have to show the love. We're going to have to start extorting yeah, Lamont. Yeah, we share parlays around here. Come Send on, it bro. to me. I, just, I got tears, At boy. At was 91, you <laughs> 800. It's I'm easy going. to brag when it's over. Yeah. Man, no. <laughs> I, he didn't hit three. The, I trust him. He two in a row, right, McNuggets? Our last three tickets have all come from Lamont. Yeah, yeah. send me. He he send me one tonight. I got tear for you. My wife said if I don't start, she said if you hit like last week, I, I, I had a little parlay out. Yeah. I ain't hit. She said, you're done. <laughs> you're finished. I saw that you, I didn't get a chance to watch it yet, but I saw that you and your wife did a podcast. Yes, we have a, we have a podcast. Y'all can go check it out. Um, we have a, uh, we have a, it's a, we have a uh, reality based uh, kind of skit thing. So we, we explore the differences in our culture uh, and, it, and it's called Blazing Love. <laughs> that is awesome. Gee, didn't your doctor tell you to talk less? Yes, that's true. She, he the did. doctor did tell you to talk last. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't, you know, check out the latest episode. Um, we yeah. went to, I took her on a really nice date. You'll never, you'll never guess what. All right. McDonald's. Nope. Damn. Well, you got to, you got to tune in. Can't tune give in. it away. Yeah, uh, that's right. I'm not going to give it away here. All right, let's jump into this, guys. When, when, when you, Tyvis, we'll start with you. When you saw the news that the Browns signed Tyler Huntley, what was your reaction to Dang, PJ Walker done. Oh God, God he was already the done. The legend is gone, He's man. Scary. It was like when when Mufasa died on Lion King, man. I, it just a tear about rolled down my face. 
a winning quarterback. <laughs> no, oh when God. I see <laughs> when I seen the Browns get Tyler Huntley, though, I I said they needed another quarterback for camp. I mean, that's pretty much what that is. Um, he's he fits the mobile. He's he's African American. He's so, black and so mobile. My, everybody, my, black and mobile. My statement still stands strong. Uh, he's a Pro Bowler, but outside of that, it's stop not a, with the Pro Bowler. He's a Pro Bowler. It's a fraud. He's a, pro, it's a fraud. Is he not a Pro Bowler? <laughs> yeah, he is, but it's All a fraud. Right, I bet you he got he extra money. money. He this got, goes right into his gag. <laughs> I mean, it goes yeah, it right does. into it. it. Does. It's crazy. That's like giving Deshaun Watson credit for the win the Colts game. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. What I know is he's he's literally a better version oh God. of PJ Walker. I, I, I told you. I'm telling you, look, hey, this is Lamar went down yeah. last year, not last year, the season before, and they said the season's over. Tyler Huntley came in there. Yeah. And they went to the playoffs still. And they lost. They did. But it, because he decided to put the ball out from the two yard line, which I don't know why you did that. If you would have just got pushed in the end zone, and, and then I think a Buckeye returned at 98 yards. He, did. For he almost didn't make it. He did. Go Bucks. <laughs> Anyways, but he's, uh, he's essentially another PJ Walker with the yeah. mobile aspect. And he wins games. I mean, but, what, okay, more me you, ask, what more do you want from your QB? Gee, let me ask you this. Mm. Let me ask you this because, you know, they had P.J. Walker eventually as the, well, really he was the third quarterback. Last year you had Kellen Mond in camp as the fourth quarterback. He knew he wasn't going to make the team. But this is a little different to me because Tyler Huntley's been a legitimate backup quarterback in the league. So you now have four quarterbacks on this team that have legitimately been on rosters for at least the last year. Obviously, DTR was a rookie last year. So is there anything else you're reading into signing another guy who's actually played in this league and been a backup quarterback <coughs> for a while? Or is he just a camp body that they can cut? Man, listen, I, when I came out and started screaming, uh, you know, Operation Stockpile, I didn't know they was really going to take it to heart like that. <laughs> they, really? They, they really took my notes and ran with them notes, man. And what you watch is what, they, what they're trying to do is they're saying all our chips are in. But let's look at some of the small little corners and parses, pieces and parts of our roster where <clears throat> if something go wrong, we need to plug and play and we need to con- be able to continue to keep winning games. You take a look at what the quarterback room is right now. DTR, is, 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 he looked like he, he, he's uh, not, not, not only is he not going to be on open day roster, it looks like he's going to be on the practice squad. Whoa. But, you, but if you're <coughs> trying to put him on the practice Whoa. squad, somebody will claim him. Whoa. Warline. Warline. Man, you need to cut that what out. What you mean? You Brent Hun- cut that out. Hunley is better than DTR. Are you sick in the head? Uh, you- <laughs> <laughs> Hun- he's not. You just. He's not. Are you. you are you DTR? Ill? You ill? Listen, I gave him his name. I started saying his name slow. D. T. Listen, right now. Hundley is a better quarterback to him. Cut it out. If you had one game to win, who you who would you play? D- Stop. Dorian Thompson. Stop. Robinson. I, I will. Stop. I would say that if I had to win one game right now, I'd probably start Tyler Huntley because no, he's wouldn't. played more in the league. No, you wouldn't. Yeah. I think long term, though, I'd rather have DTR. Did you? You before DTR got hurt in the in the, in the Denver game, he was actually it was progress. Exactly, yeah. he was moving up. The only reason his stats look bad is because his receivers dropped the ball every time. They weren't used to that heat hey, that wait, he was wait. throwing. So, Tyvis, are you saying you think Tyler Huntley's a camp body, nothing more, even though he's been a legitimate backup? Yes. Oh, that's crazy. Now, they did pay him league minimum. He might not. So, no, he might why be on the practice he, squad. If you're Tyler Huntley, why would you sign with the Browns if you didn't think there was any chance? Well, the because be, believe it or not, yeah. this is let's, we got to give credit where credit's due, which is what I'm a firm believer in. Yeah. Kevin Stefanski does an amazing job at getting quarterbacks to play well in games. Just what it is. But it, I mean, you think about like last, it was Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen was terrible in the NFL, but he got to the Browns and he actually looked decent in man. the preseason. In the preseason, he did look decent. He did. That's pushing it. He he <laughs> didn't look decent in the preseason. I can't even remember. Kellen Mond didn't even make another but roster, wait, but he was decent but in the preseason. But still, he does. If, Kevin Stefanski does well with quarterbacks. You're saying he has no chance to make the roster, That's barring injury. Who? That's crazy. Uh, Hunt. Tyler Hunt. Tyler Hunt. No, I don't think. so. Okay, so then why would he? Even He's a he, backup to Lamar Jackson. It, it, what? It, right, like why? It, it, it's weird to me that nobody was willing to have take him as a backup, or at least. At the very least, I got to imagine why wasn't some team willing to let him compete for the number two quarterback? The role? same reason that they won't let. Why would you not let Phillip compete? For because Phillip sucks. <laughs> He's terrible. <laughs> he, 
It, can you show them stats He's again? Terrible. Did I miss something? What's Tyler terrible. Huntley? <laughs> them stats ain't that great. Tyler Huntley's stats are not great. Yeah, what you talking about? Oh, nobody said they had great stats. Let me see. Just flash. Just flash what you flashed what, earlier. What, what do you got? Let's see the stats. <laughs> okay, of course that's not great, but that's way better than P.J. Walker. <laughs> P.J. <laughs> Walker is like well, seven well, touchdowns and 12 Wait a minute. What is, his, what is his overall record as a, as a star? I don't be? care, Tyler. I do. Re- win-loss record, especially in a small sample size, is meaningless Bro, for judging not, the quarterback. Not as well, no, hey, hey, real quick, Chief, let, let me give Tyvis the answer. <laughs> yeah, Tyvis Huntley's career record is three and six. PJ Walker's career record is five and four, six and four if you include the Indianapolis game. Yeah, this is an emba- However, it's embarrassing to even. What is this? However, but but Phillip has thrown, no he's job. He's thrown six touchdowns, no Tyvis, sense. and has sixteen interceptions. The, six touchdowns, you, sixteen you, interceptions. I'm, what you're talking about I'm is not, irrelevant. I'm, I'm, <laughs> what's PJ Walker's completion percentage? It's got to be way lower than that. I don't know. PJ Walker's completion percentage for his career. Is fifty four point six last do, season for Cleveland forty eight point nine. Why, why do y'all let him do this to y'all every time? Yeah, he gets y'all every time. Yeah, it's true. And then you got to rattle right. off stats like this is You're actually right. a genuine conversation. You're right. Not. He You're gets correct. you every team. You are like, correct. This is about this is about DTR and whether or not he's going to be obviously. What was his injury? DTR's injury. Uh, I don't remember. Do you? Oh, no, no, to end, it, no it, to end his season, he had an ankle or something. Yeah, well, no, the, yeah then he got hurt against Houston on that one third or fourth down play. Um, was he, it, he's expected to be is there any no. part? Is there any part of either of you guys that when you heard about this, because this happened to me for a second, and then I thought about it longer, and I said, nah, that doesn't make any sense. But for a second, I thought, are they worried Deshaun Watson's not going to be ready no. for the start of the season? No. Here's what I think they were. worried about it for Here's a what I no. think they were worried about. Deshaun Watson, I'm going to let y'all know something right now. Is not going to play one preseason game. Not one. <laughs> Won't see him. Zero. I, would, I, I don't know. He's in that, that, bubble wrap. That, he, that, that's, that's a little. You think that's a good idea? Uh, uh, to, from getting I, don't, I, I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but they not going to play him. It's done. You, think Thomas, you agree? Uh, he might not even be active. So, my, so, I tell you what. I would have to see if he's lighten it up in like training camp. Yeah, then cool, you know, but if I you got to see it in game because no, yes, you do because I'm gonna tell you why why Be- because when he when he first got here, he looked all right like they, he was lighting it, but then like the season came around. It wasn't a good turnaround, you know, and I, I I'm a firm believer that listen practice you, the way you practice is how you play in the game, but the game speed is different. It's here's totally what, different. Here, People act different in the game. Here's what I'm. Here, I gotta see you in. I would. He at least gotta take a series. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get my rebuttal, and then I want a 60 second poll after rebuttal. We got you, G. This man. If he gets hurt in any preseason games, John, you need to cut that out. The whole organization is getting fired. Every all the cat manipulation they doing, all these little picks, all these listen. That's a, that's, if he that's gets a lie. Hurt, if he gets hurt, it's a wrap. But that's a lie. But we gee, said that last year. But gee, if if if, if he's so fragile uh, that we're worried about him getting hurt in one series in the preseason, we, we, how's it gonna last the whole year? We can't. We can't help that. We we can't. We just got to feel. No. We just gonna have to be unsure if he's gonna be sharp you, or not. You live in it. You live in No. It. Yes, I am. What's the last yes, time? I'm, I'm, when yes, the last time a quarterback yes. got hurt in the preseason. I'm living it. When is the last time a quarterback? <laughs> well, Aaron Rod. Oh no, that was regular. Yeah, regular. When the last uh, time? Ooh. Didn't uh, somebody on Minnesota got hurt? Bridget, Kirk Cousins it was, was in Bridgewater there. a couple of years ago. Teddy Bridgewater. Man. Let me tell you this. For Teddy no, Bridgewater stay they, hurt. I don't remember. The injury, the injury that Deshaun Watson has, no, pretty much no football player has ever had that injury. So or at least no quarterback. So, so no is, quarterback. Is Joe Burrow in that same category? No. no if, if I was if I hey, was if I was the Bengals, like if, I was a, if I was if I was the Bengals. Wrist? Is that what it is? Yeah, he broke it. Or I think he broke his wrist. Deshaun? No, 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 no. Joe, Burrow. Joe Burrow. I wouldn't play Joe Burrow either. He went sniffed on. Listen, well, I don't think he plays anymore. I'm gonna keep it well, real. He hasn't because yeah. he's, <laughs> <every time. laughs> he's Listen, I'm just going by what they're looking at. Yeah. You got three quarterbacks right now, and you talk about Deshaun Watson is just throwing in March. You gonna get him to Jeez. camp, and you go and and you got to break him in easier because you don't even know if he's gonna have uh, the, the enough stamina in his, stamina in his arm to throw consecutively every but single day. Gee, you're not paying it. To, 
it's a, it's about to be a new playbook. You can learn that. No, you it, yeah. When in, in practice, game, you know, barely played in for three game. Years. That's where you need to learn it. And I, my goal <laughs> is yeah. to get him to play. I hear you. I, I, I'm with Ty. I, generally, I don't care that guy's playing the preseason, but I'm with Tyvis on this. I haven't played at least a little. Smart man. Boy. I ain't playing. Playing <laughs> bubble wrap. You get out there in the in the regular season, and you say he can't handle it. And now, and, you, and, now you and, stuck. And what, and what is your excuse? Let's just be clear. Yeah. You got a guy who has not played traditionally the whole time he's been here. Ooh. Instead of making sure you get him to the regular season where you can see and evaluate Jeez. him, you play <laughs> him in meaningless but, games in the playoffs. But it's, Gee, just, it's not cut, just about it's the, it's playing the in the regular season. Playoffs. It's playing well in the regular he's season. He's going to have to work his way into it. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not ch- chancing it. What the polls say? So, G, I put the poll up, <laughs> and I said it specifically how you worded it. Will everyone get fired if Deshaun Watson? Oh, he's gonna put everybody get game. fired. That's no, not that's, what he. he I wanted said, to pull him really play or not. Should, oh, should, should he play? Or not? Should he play any preseason oh, game? Oh, right, Let me put a new poll up. Well, give, put, poll up. give yes, us give that, that one. one. You got it. Sixty-one uh, percent says no. Everyone will not be fired if he gets hurt. Thank you. Okay, so there's at least. All right, while you do the other poll, give me another. I gotta say, I'm kind of in the end. Like I went through when I heard this news, I was actually. Having lunch with Jonathan Peterlin. Mm. Shout out to JP. And um, Paul's up, G. Okay. And and a, a, a mutual friend now named Matt, who's we've added to my fantasy football league. Shout out to Matt, who's a big fan of the why, show. Why can't we be added to you? He already football. asked us to. He, 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 is it a dynasty? Fantasy baseball. Oh, yeah, never mind. I don't know. First of all, I have invited <laughs> all been, of you guys to every us, fantasy league he, I do, he, he, and nobody he, responds he, to my text. I'm not doing dynasty. We'll, 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 well, well you just got mad that why couldn't you be invited, but I did invite you. I've been sidetracked you again. Got well, you get again. your story out. You and Peter Lynn having a nice candlelit lunch. What happened? <laughs> oh, ah, yes, sir. There yes, was sir. there was wives around. There okay. was little kids. Aaron was doing his own thing. But but um, anyway, uh, so I see the news, get the alert on my phone, and so I'm like, wow. My first thought was, okay, something's up here because you have four guys <clears throat> who have at least been a backup quarterback in the league, including. DTR. All of them can play a little bit. All of them can play. Like none of them are hundred percent guesses. Yeah. None. Of, I. I. I was like, there's no Kellen Mons in this group. And then I was. So I went through a, a series of things. I was like, is there a chance they're going to move on from DTR? And then like Tyvis, I was like, no, they're not going to do that. I can't see that. They can't. I don't even think they can put them on the practice squad because I think some some crappy team would would pick them 100%, 100%. up. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Right. And then and then I thought, well. Does this mean they're a little concerned that Watson's not going to be ready for the season? And then I said, no, he's going to be throwing soon. Why, you know, he can't be ready in five and a half months. That doesn't make any sense. But then I was like, well, maybe he's not going to be ready for a lot of the offseason program. And, the more, and then I saw that, that Huntley signed for the league minimum, and I thought to myself, what you said now, that maybe the, even though he's more proven than Kellen Mond, that they kind of are looking at him like Kellen Mond, like he's just a camp body and that's it. Maybe I saw Earl tweet. Maybe they can trade a draft pick for him. I, I would trade him for a draft pick. I guess that's possible. Yeah, it's unlikely, you know, you but know what this move is? I'm gonna tell you what this move was. You ready? All right, go ahead. This move right here. Let me see it, Steve. This move right here is to bring competition. There is no complacency. There is nobody's job is guaranteed. It's really big for DTR. We want to help you become better. We want to help your development. So what's gonna help that? competition. So you bring a guy here that's a former pro bowler and a guy that's actually been in the league. Stop, stop doing that. He's a pro. I, I did it in quotations. Former pro All right, bowler. Fair enough. And you bring that in here against DTR and he actually start balling a little bit in practice. DTR going to think to himself, man, I got to step my game up because they actually might cut me and get rid yeah. of me type thing. So I think that this is just yeah. the competition thing. You don't the, want you don't want nobody resting on what they did last season. And that's what good organizations yeah. do. You always bring in guys in there to keep the competition. But teams going. don't usually have four quarterbacks that have played. every yes. every team <clears throat> no, because they usually draft some rookie or something right. like that. They're not gonna do that. Or take a veteran who's yeah. who's yeah. been the third stringer on yeah, a bunch something of teams like that. never played. <clears throat> this is to me, this just But what would make DTR work more? Oh, this guy actually but, played. To, to, does me. anybody question his work ethic? No, I but, don't you, think so. but you still want to make sure. This has but let me ask you this: is anybody, is anybody? It's weird. We talked about this before the show that the Browns have not announced the Jameis contract. That's and it's been a number of days. Is there a chance that something's happened there and they're not going to sign him? He going back out? Maybe. Do we think that's a possibility. I, I mean, that's a possibility. It's a possibility. <laughs> he maybe want to hold out for 
a job where he may be able to perceive that he can win a, a starting yeah. job somewhere. That I don't may know. be a thing, but I, I don't think it's just about DTR. I just think it, it's about this. Listen, when you're dealing with, 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 <clears throat> with your franchise quarterback's arm, you're going to be very cautious. You're not going to force him to do anything. If he has any pain, any swelling, any of that, they're going to they gonna walk it back. They're going to take a look at what they did during the regular season and say, look, how did we handle this last year? Couple of games we put him in, he wasn't ready. Yeah. We had him in the practice, he was throwing, he walks off with a shoulder. <coughs> they're not going to do that this year. If anything, there are going to be some scheduled days off. There's going to be some scheduled weeks where he's nothing take doing nothing but mental reps. And I look at it like this way. They want three quarterbacks in there that are going to be running the offense in a specific type way. Jameis Winston has started games, in it, and I think he's going to be taking the predominantly the number of, of the first team snaps when you're talking about right. install. But Jameis is very different than the other three quarterbacks. Yes, he Jameis is. Jameis is, you know, I know there's a, I, you know, there's a lot of people out there, uh, white people, get yourself together, that think every black quarterback's a runner. Let's be honest about it. That's what a lot of white people think. You see a black quarterback, oh, he can run, he can run. Yeah, Jameis Winston can't run. No, 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 no. He got He's his, not a runner. He got bad legs. His legs move different. As like I said on Friday, he got a fat ass just like me. <laughs> you I love you, Jameis. Super. You By the way, that. I, I <laughs> am, oh my and God. that's a compliment. Like, he's got a that's big, strong worse. trunk. That's terrible. But he's man. a thrower. He's he not just, a runner at just, all. You just digging yourself oh, deeper in the hole. We got a trunk. It's a compliment to Jameis. A trunk. He's a thrower, man. man we don't. I, we don't comment on oh. people's men. Why? Oh. Why? I'm secure in my sexuality. Me and my too. But I. I don't know. Like <laughs> Jameis is a fat ass. Adam That's both. crazy. <laughs> but I also y'all got a graphic. A <laughs> what oh, was that? Was, they was on a heater Thursday. Oh, my. <laughs> oh this was Thursday we did this? I thought he wasn't was here. No, Thursday. Oh, so, so they got a, they I got didn't a co-sign any of this. Listen, oh. they got a new thing, G, that anytime we say something oh, yeah. on the fence, they make a graphic Time and put it on there right away. Things. Where was I at? Well, and, then, <laughs> and then you tweeted crazy. out without context. And then <laughs> yeah, people were making that's the whole comments. point. People oh, will yeah. see it without context. The chat like, is going Whoa. crazy. <laughs> Only one day the graphic, it was insane. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. <laughs> no, David, but, Jay, David, by the way, the result of your poll, <laughs> yeah. 70% said yes, he should play in the preseason. 30% said Wow, said I'm no, surprised by that. that. I don't know but why you're surprised. On G. Good, because he wrong. It's two left shoes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Listen, I'm not playing him. That is the First time ever that the chat just said no. That was we are was, not with you. You gonna sit a dude who My just plan. missed all of that all, the half, the yep. second half of a whole season, sure who's am. already missed a ton of games. Yep. No, he gonna we gotta see what we got mm. going. He, he, just in case we need to make play, some. Y'all wanna play? Y'all wanna play Nick Chubb too? No, he ain't touching. Right. Not a single. But, that, <laughs> but you know what you get, <laughs> <with> Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> don't get too. Don't first get too. Of all, first of all, that's what I'm the, saving the bubble wrap the, for. The, is the, the running back position. No running backs really play in the preseason. No, no veterans at yeah. least. Yeah. Let me ask y'all one question. We'll move yeah. on to Mike Vrabel in a sec. But assuming Jameis is part of this quarterback room, is there a more talented quarterback room in the NFL than oh the Cleveland God. Browns? Here right we go. Go. <laughs> Mike, Mike is good at that now. You notice he gives Who you those thinks cuts. about that? That's though. crazy. The producer talk. Is there a more talented <laughs> room? <with> yes. <laughs> <laughs> because you have Patrick Mahomes, and it's Patrick. irrelevant who that's <laughs> the It could be Patrick Mahomes and T. Higgins in the back. No. And it doesn't I, matter. That's a line. I would Cincinnati. And, well, there's other team. Every team that's got a better quarterback than Deshaun Watson has a more talented. No, because yes. I like Jake Browning as a second. Yeah, right. Option. Yeah, no. Every, listen, the, the answer is the Kansas City Chiefs and whoever they got it back up. <laughs> who, who is they back up? No, who knows? Slappy McGillicuddy. Skeletor. <laughs> like, why wouldn't the Chiefs have signed Tyler? I don't. I don't understand. Nobody was interested in Tyler Huntley as a backup. And he got that's the weird vet to me. minimum with incentives, so it cost the Browns essentially nothing. Yeah. I think at the end of the day. <laughs> Deshaun should be ready to play for the season, but throughout camp, both to your point yeah. earlier. I don't if know. he needs some days off, if he doesn't want to, if they're not he, ready to have him throw so much, he gave him that. Play. <laughs> no, that was crazy. Crazy. That, that was that was crazy. No, that was, that was you crazy. you lose on the poll because I said he be, should be under bubble wrap yeah. and he gonna have days off. They said to your point, bull. That was a crazy. I no, 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 no. Wait a second. <laughs> but you said the reason you said no. DTR might be gone no. in terms of the reason he's staying. They stole Did my you whole say argument. That? No. They stole my whole are you you see how G, they be doing? G did say that Deshaun will be have days off for of stuff. Yeah. That's that was G's point. But if well, he the said, overall point, whoever made it first, 
Bo was the one who, when he yeah, said yeah, yeah. it, he was this looking crazy. at me. It's not your day. It's not your day. You man. see how they follow him? Like, to, give, to give Deshaun just extra time to recoup or come yeah. and have as many arms. They always carry four. They carry four last season. They man, carried four two seasons that. ago. And if they can <laughs> flip them for a late round pick like they did with Josh Dobbs. He stole your work. It is what it is. Uh, let's go to the next topic here, guys. Before we do that. Better quarterback, Tyler Huntley or Josh Dobbs? Huntley. Me too. I'd yeah, say Huntley also. Close. If you're trying to go to the Cavs game on Wednesday, they're playing the Miami Heat, a big-time Eastern Conference playoff preview potentially. You better be using Game Time to buy your tickets. Download the Game Time app and use promo code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. You may be asking why Game Time. Well, Game Time has killer last-minute deals, all-in prices. You can see the view from your seat before you buy it. And their best price guarantee helps you take all the guesswork out of buying those tickets. Once again, just download the Game Time app, create an oh. account, use promo code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed on Game Time. By the way, I'm thinking about our display on the table here. If you could show that, Steve. Like, can't we do better than Channing Fry and Ricky Rubio for our bobbleheads? I mean, evidently... Channing Fry and Ricky Rubio? That's what we have? We, uh, evidently, we don't got them Kelsey Bob. I'm say you get the Kelsey Bob I, I or, did not get Can we get LeBron? Bob. Can we get Kyrie? Can we get Donovan or Darius or, or even Jared Allen? I mean... We got Channing Fry and Ricky Rubio. Anthony has a Donovan Mitchell one. We will bring it down. It's not in the budget. Not in the budget. Let's not go. A, I don't a, know where we got those, to be honest with you. Not in the um, budget. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of crazy. What? The Donovan? Oh, yeah. Well, we, we have to readjust Rubio. some stuff. Who gives a All right, guys. On either. Friday, right after we left UCSS, yeah. we finished the TV show. We finished posting our clips. We were walking out the studio, and we see this bombshell of announcement. The Browns had hired Mike Vrabel as a consultant. Yeah. What were your thoughts to the Browns hiring the 2021 NFL Coach of the Year as a coaching and personnel consultant? My first reaction, guys, is the same reaction I've had to everything the Browns have done in the coaching realm this offseason. It's, and it's a two-part thing. One, why have they not extended Kevin Stefanski? That's everything. That's what I keep thinking. Mm-hmm. And two... Did Kevin Stefanski want him hired, or is this Jimmy Haslam forcing it on him? <laughs> now, I don't know the answer to either of those questions. And he's <laughs> got the cowboy hat in that picture. So random. But, um, I thought it was a baller-ass picture. I'm not going to lie. When I made that one, I was yeah, like, yeah. it's a power But uh, listen, Mike Vrabel obviously can be a valuable guy to have in the organization. I'm just a little concerned that these moves are being forced on Kevin Stefanski and in the end, if that's the case, I don't like it. I, obviously, I don't know. I'm hoping I'm, I'm wrong. But I have this feeling in my gut that that's happening. And I don't, if that's the case, I don't like it. If this was a Stefanski decision, then I love it. Because he's a smart football man. And how can it hurt? But I don't know. Uh, I have mixed feelings. When I that. heard it, Tyvis, I'm like, okay. Um, my thing was, we was, on that, we was doing the Ultimate Browns. And I was like, I like it for, from a standpoint of being like, Again, Operation Stockpile. Again, thank you, Cleveland Browns, for listening to your boy G. Bush. You stockpile quarterbacks. Now you stockpiling coaches. I like the mindset, right? You Look how many people they've brought in here that has a very strong mindset, right? You go get – you got Vrabel. You already got Jim Schwartz, right? Then you, you, you get Tommy Reese, who used to be a, a, a uh, offensive coordinator. You go get Dorsey, right? So now you got all these mixes of, in, in, of thought processes. And I like it because it, it reminds me of what smart companies do. Smart companies always have think tanks and always have consultants come in to give you some outside influence or outside thoughts that you may not have had. And plus, I just think it's a little bit of a, you know, <coughs> you scratch your, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. A couple of years ago, Jim Schwartz was out of football. Guess what? Mike Vrabel had him on as an special assistant, right? Mm-hmm. Now it's an opportunity for him to give it back to him. You know how it is, the good old boy system. But I don't mind to be in a good old boy system yeah. if the boys is good. I like Vrabel in so, this case. Do you do you have no concern that this was forced, or you don't care either way? You think it's good? Uh, well, listen, I think there, there is something to be said for this, and I would ask the question why. It, it would be nothing for them to offer Stefanski and uh, Andrew Barry contracts right now. It would be nothing to it. It's nothing. 
I don't know why people try to make it seem like, oh, there's some special timing that they got to have, and this is the reason. It's perplexing a little bit at this point yeah. because, like, come on, this is stretching out a long time, and, and, and you can see they bring in other people. <laughs> they making moves in other places. They right. doing different things in the organization. So it seems crazy that you wouldn't have this be done by now, especially if you bring in a big name like that. That guy got a big name. That's kind of crazy to think, yeah. right? Yeah. So right. I don't know. What do you what what's your take on it, Tyvis? First of all, I said go Bucks. Uh, <laughs> it's time for the Buckeyes to do yeah. what we always do. We always got to save something. So it started with Denzel. Can you save your basketball program? Ooh, Jake Deaver's going to do a great job of doing that. Thank Coach you very Speak. much. Coach Firing higher. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, when I seen it, I said to myself, it's a it's a good thing. If you want to say if it was forced or not, I honestly think this is what I truly yeah. think. Jim Schwartz, after one year being there, he's got he's earned the respect of a lot of people. Sure, I'd say. Yeah, I think what he's done to not just the defense but to that team, he's changed the mindset, attitude, and toughness. This is what just that whole team just started living that, and you've seen great things happen. I think he said to himself, him and Vrabel's got a great relationship, and Jim said, "Hey, Kevin." My boy Mike want to come and just be a consultant. I think he'll help me with the defense. I think overall he's a great football mind. He can help uh, with the attitude and toughness part. He was a sm very smart football player. Um, we got linebackers that we need to groom up some more this year with JOK taking the big step. I think he could come in there and be very productive in that room as well. And I think overall he'd be an asset. And I think Kevin Stefanski said, you know what? You're right. Let's bring him on and let's help because we want to do everything we can to try to win a Super Bowl this year. So I think that's what that what led to that happening. I don't think Kevin Stefanski is one bit uh, worried yeah. about him. Like people like, oh, he's right. going to take Kevin's job. Like right. I don't think that's the case. I think what Kevin Stefanski did last season kind of nailed him down. Like you Jimmy. would think, but you, you could, just never know. No, with Jimmy. It, I, no, I like Jimmy be crazy to do that. Like that, he hasn't shown you he's crazy at times. Yeah, but that's that that's absurd. Okay, like, that's really absurd. Like, because right. what he did last year, like I said, if you take thirty-one coaches and put them in the same predicament that Kevin was in last year, they don't have the same results. That's just a fact. Well, I don't know about thirty-one, but, I, but many. thirty-one. Thirty. Don't think any other coach thirty-one won as many and games. Patty Mahomes go down. Andy Reid's done. Oh, uh, uh, well, okay. I mean, uh, he, he, I mean, he, the Steelers. Brock Purdy went. No Brock Purdy went down. They were done. And I, I know, I know this is so. This, yes, this thirty-one, because that's mm. the only two other coaches that I mm. would consider. No, I, I don't agree with that, but I get your point. You see, I get you. Do you <laughs> see? You see how? Like, let's be real. Yeah. Um, you see how? If Deshaun Watson doesn't play well, and there, there's always seasons that happen like this. Teams that are supposed to be good that get off to a really bad start and it sure. spirals. Yeah. I, I'm wondering, and, and I'm not saying, and I don't think this will happen. My only question is, what does his job security <laughs> looks like, look like if things spiral? Yeah, well, until he gets a new contract. And it's, uh, I, I, you're right, Ty, it's crazy to think there's any threat to his job. And I don't really think that, but every other move in the coaching staff that gets made before he signs an extension makes me a little nervous. Now, I think your theory on how this happened is correct. makes a ton of sense. Well, and you. so you're probably right about that. Uh, you know, and and... I, it it makes a lot of sense. I, I I can buy that 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 happened that way. So so that does make me feel. I'm, 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 let me think. I'm trying to think of a. I'm thinking of a real good analogy, right? Well, let me gee, think. I think I think I know what you're trying to get at. You're saying that if the schedule comes out and the Browns in the first four weeks of the season play the Chiefs, the Eagles, the Ravens, and the Bengals, and somehow go one and three, right? The calls, and you know it's going to happen, regardless of whether. They, they're losing 58 to 52 or 13 to 10. There's going to be a fraction of the fan base that starts calling for Vrabel, right uh, or wrong. Oh, That's what you're kind of getting at, right? Teams should not yeah. care about what the fan base is calling I, for. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to, but, put, to what, put the terminology what G's trying to describe. If but I'm reading what he's saying if correctly. you care about something like that, if Kevin Stefanski has an extension, then the amount of fans calling for that, if you care about it, will be a lot Goes lower way down. Yes. because you have an extension. Where you're not going to fire a guy after four games where you just signed an extension. Gee, I'm just—I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is that what you're trying to get at? Well, here, no. Here, here's what I'm—here's what I'm gonna say. So we doing this show right here. We doing the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. This is crazy. 
Mm-hmm. So we all doing the show or whatever. We do, we moving along. Everything's good. But we had an impasse, right? So one day we come in, we go ready to sit the show that we sit in the show. They say, hey, um, we want to let y'all know uh, Tony Rizzo's on the show. Now, now, see you. Watch, see you. This is the, this is why I'm the analogy. God, I would be like, this, let's do so, it. So, so me, and we like, let's do it. <laughs> let's do but it. here's the thing. <laughs> but here's the thing. The problem is, you got a show now, where you like, okay, well now Tony Rizzo is on the show. Like people looking around, like he's just gonna be here like once a day. His name is too big to be here once a day. So now they're like, okay, well hold on, who be leading shows around here? A Bull Lee shows, Jay Lee shows. So they're going to have Bull, Jay, and Tony Rizzo? That's crazy. What you going to do? Somebody got something. Who's move? What? We do it all the... What are you talking about? Nah. Jay, when it's you, Jay, and Bull, uh-uh. all no, three of no, y'all no, leave no, shows. No, 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 no. See, and it's fine. No, no, no. This is different. No, it ain't. It is. How? Yeah, because they, they came in together. They so could be adding an extra. You add somebody. So, 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 so when you add somebody, who going? Like, so you add Mike Vrabel, right? You already got Jim Schwartz, who got a lot of experience. You already got Kevin Stefanski. You already then told Alex Van Pelt he got to go. You brought in Dorsey. You bringing in all these other different people, and now it's like, well, okay, uh, you don't just bring in really top big names just to hang out. Like top names work. Well, yeah. <laughs> in the same in the same doing? breath, Mike Vrabel is jobless. Today he's jobless. Right. He's been jobless. He, yes. So he and he but, wanted to be a head coach. That's not like he wants to be a coordinator. The, so until he gets his job that he wants, right. he wants to still be around. But the let game. me ask you this: Tyler. and on top of that, he's from Cleveland. He wanted, Ty, he's a Tyler, Browns fan. That's no, even worse. No, Tyler, it ain't. Let me ask you this: You're a player on the Browns. Yep. Okay. You were on the Browns last year. You know how great a job Kevin Stefanski did. You just said it. Mm-hmm. You thought he was the best coach in the league. Yeah. Okay. He, I mean, he won the coach I, of the he year. He won the award. So if, if you're a player on the Browns right now, and somebody said to you, one of your buddies came up to you and said, why didn't Kevin Stefanski get an extension? Like, would you be thinking, like, as a player, are you thinking that's weird? Or players, you know, like, if somebody brought it to your You team, ask it. You ask it. Tyvis Powell. Tyvis Powell. Yeah, Tyvis Powell was on, the player. No, because yeah. I'd be worried about my extension. No, but I'm saying if somebody specifically. Yeah, that's a fact. It, let's say you had an extension. Okay. Again, that's not okay. an issue for you. Your team leader. Okay. You don't think that's weird? And then they sign Mike Rip Now. If they give Stefanski an extension, then I think all this this hubbub about Vrabel goes away. Yeah, it's out we of We don't here. worry about it anymore. Well, they need to hurry but up until and do Stefanski it, gets an extension. I'm sick of hearing it all. You know, I, it's I, only been, what, 48 hours. Be, I'm sick of but it Until already. Stefanski gets an extension, there's always there's always going to be some people thinking, well, they brought Vrabel in here for a reason in but case that, it goes badly. That, that's just – that. <laughs> what you're talking about is literally just, just to spark a conversation. Because I don't, I look at this movie and I promise you the thought of him taking Kevin Stefanski job didn't even cross my mind. That's it, not even a thought. But Tyvis, if we're four games into the season, as G said, or, or Mike said, and the team gets and, off to a bad start, fired, you don't think people are thinking about if that? If they fire Kevin Stefanski, they, they wouldn't make Mike Vrabel the interim. It'd probably be Jim. And then Jim will go, oh, well, I got me a defense coordinator, Mike. Makes it easier. Yeah, that's probably so. I'm it's not saying, like it's not like Mike is here think, to take Jim. Kevin's I know job. that. I know that. I agree. But in the end, there's no more conversation if Kevin gets an extension, and I, he should. And get an the Browns should dead this conversation by sending it out so, at, at my, twelve o'clock exactly. today. Exactly. So, so my thought process is for everybody that that gets on the media guys, right? And says you guys are just stirring. I hate the word stirring the pot. You stirring the pot. It is. This this is. Uh, I'm with them on this. One. This but, is definitely but, stirring. But, the but pot. no, you so, you know us. We're not saying this. Not y'all. Pot. But I'm but, saying people that's but, like. But, but this my is question, just don't you think fans are having these same conversations? So, yes. so yes. my question, my question to them people is, what is the reason he doesn't have a, a, a contract extension? Guys, what two tell coach me. of the years in four years? If you could tell me that and come up with a good reason, yeah, that that he does not have an extension or Andrew Berry does not have an extension, I'll leave it alone. I won't say nothing. I, yeah, I agree, and I'm I'm Jimmy, not I'm Jimmy, not saying Jimmy they brought, is off on a golf resort right well, now they, raising I, money. Time is, I'm not saying that they brought <laughs> in Vrabel to replace. No, him, I'm just saying. But what when you bring in guys who have been head coaches, it makes you think about the fact that he hasn't been signed. And, well, there's another person here who could legitimately be the coach. 
if things change and they wanted to fire it, him. Listen, it's, it's just like saying, it's just like all of a sudden you come on the radio and be like, yeah, me and my wife are going through some stuff. We've been arguing back and forth. We're trying to get our marriage back. And the next thing they see you is in a grocery store with a hot girl, chick. <laughs> You can't have, you can't be around the hot chick when you and your wife going no, through something. What do you mean? No, ain't nothing. Yes, you can't. Can. No, you can't. <laughs> yes, no, you can. If y'all is, it y'all depends <laughs> on what you do. <laughs> what are you talking about? They gonna be looking at you crazy. You, you see, listen. You know he you said. See, wait a minute. He said they are you and no, what he doing G, over there? You it's see? True. Did you not see <laughs> what Lil Meech did? That's, I can't help my cousin with groceries. Hey, with the bag? Who was hey, in the grocery little store? Little Meech is out of pocket. Yeah, we went to the grocery store. Gee, first of all, who's Little Meech and what did he do? <laughs> Big Meech's son. I don't know who he is. We either. went to the grocery store. I can't help her with the bags? Who so, is Gee, Big we did, Meech? We did a live show on Friday okay. right after the news broke, right? Okay. And it was a fascinating social experiment looking at the chat. Okay. Because the chat is exactly what this is right here. Half the chat goes, great football move, helps the team, no issue to Stefanski, no distraction. From a football standpoint, this is brilliant, which I agree with. From a pure football standpoint, it's a brilliant move. You get another genius head coach or a, a proven winner in the NFL into this room. The other half of the chat was already calling for, oh, Vrabel's a better head coach than Stefanski. And you can yeah, see. G and I are not saying really either of those things. No, no, no. But to Tyvis' point, it's not going to be a distraction. You're saying it could be a distraction. I, I, I'm saying the me, chat in the, immediate, in the immediate aftermath. We're talking literally 10 minutes after. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had a 50-50 split in the chat of – there's no worry about a distraction versus he's the next head coach of the Browns. To me, the only way it could become a distraction is if they if they start the season, Stefanski does not have an extension, and Which they get off ludicrous. to a bad start. Which would be ludicrous. That's crazy. That's the only way. Now, I don't think that's going to happen, but that's the only way. The equivalent is like saying, I'm, I'm signing... That, we just talk about Ohio State, right? The equivalent is they talk about, we, we signing Coach K as a consultant. What? What you wrong with, what's wrong with that? That's actually great because you're helping a young coach develop nah, into a better great. coach. We, we like, it's I great. don't want, we might, we they want, should, oh, you know what, they hey, should G, do that. Gee, the, the Milwaukee Bucks hired Doc Rivers as a consultant this year. <laughs> you see what happened? They shouldn't have never Just did, saying. and they shouldn't have did that. And they should have never hired a, see, here's the Well, that's good. Well, here, here, here's that's the, the issue. Old, that's the other coach's old. We're part. not saying it's a problem because I would hire him. Any good coach, any good football organization can never have enough good people in place. I understand that. My point is this. You open your coach up to unnecessary stuff like this when he wins coach of the year. He didn't show up to the award ceremony, by the way. Uh, You get rid of his his, his offensive coordinator, um, and that's been confirmed. And he? he, he still won't even tell you if he's calling plays. Which so is questionable, which is questionable. Yeah. So we're like, of course, people going to put two and two together. Like, we're, right. like, and, and he has no contract and, and the Browns could end this whole thing by extending him, <laughs> which is what most people want them to do. Yeah, I think we'd all be thrilled and ecstatic. If the fans end, end of con- end of controversy, but then, if they done, end but then we won't have nothing to talk about. There's, There's plenty of other <laughs> things to talk about. <laughs> then we'll figure contrary out to Stephen a, uh, Steve Smith, not Stephen <laughs> A. Smith. Contrary to Steve <laughs> Smith's <laughs> comments, but we can, we got or Steve there, Smith was going to get used by Cleveland. Go ahead, Mike. Use, use All right, guys, if you want more Browns content, make sure you check out the Ultimate Brown Show with G. Bush every Monday and Friday at 5 o'clock. G, what's on the docket tonight? I don't know. I was supposed to have Tyvis on, but then Tyvis showed up to this. So I don't know if he's going to be <laughs> home in, in time. Like, he's going to be on the road. So it might be just solo G. Bush. We might just talk tabloids. Like, nah, we, <laughs> we're not going to get it. We, we'll get into a little bit of, uh, you know, this Brent Huntley thing. And uh, I. Tyler. To, Tyler, I keep calling him Brett Huntley. Brett Huntley, he, he plays ba- former, baseball. He was, I, I, but I think I think DTR. Uh, there's there, there's a little indictment on DTR here. Wasn't he there did, a backup quarterback, Brett Huntley? Yeah, he played for the Packers. Packers, right? Yeah, and I, that guy, tall, skinny dude. And I thought he played. He played for UCLA too. He did, correct? Yeah, right. Correct. He either replaced or was replaced by Deshaun Kaiser. You're right. Yeah. Ooh. All right, guys. Over Two the scrubs. weekend, also from Friday. Deshaun Watson put out his weekly podcast, and he had an interesting quote that I thought we could discuss. This is Deshaun on his podcast, QB Unplugged with Quincy Avery, and we will discuss what he had to say afterwards. And Steve, you can play. Your offense is looking real, real dynamic. We got Jerry Judy. We got yep. Coop. We got Elijah yep. Moore. Yes, sir. You got Chubb and Joku. Yes, sir. We yes, got sir. you behind center. Is this so. everything you need to win a Super Bowl? We got the pieces. You feel me? 
Uh, I think we just got to put it all together. And, you know, once we all get healthy and we get that opportunity, or we all out there on the field at the same time for, you know, uh, uh, a full season, hell yeah, we got the chance to do it. I think we got the defense, we got the offense, we got the special teams, we got the culture, we got the fan base, like we got everything for it to do it. We just got to go do it now. What do you think? I need if Hines is a good returner, we definitely got the special teams. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, really, that's what that's the first thing that stood out when he said we got the <laughs> offense, the defense. I was with him on both. He didn't both. say the coaching staff. It's all <laughs> y'all catch it. You didn't cut that out. You, you see that? that you see, you see, <laughs> see that's what I'm talking about. Now you're digging bullets. No, I'm talking about. I wasn't trying to make anything of it. I was just he was being funny. You need that. That's part of. The, is that culture? That's part of the offense and defense. Okay, you, fair you, enough. It's, I'll give you that. They don't separate players. And I'll give you that. I'm not trying to stir up the pot. But, uh, I'm not trying to stir yeah, the pot. Yeah, I promise. yeah, Go yeah. Ahead. <laughs> What James yeah. Hart used to do. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, no. Um, he, I mean, yeah, they got the pieces for sure, and it is about putting it together. But you got so many different things now. Elements. You got a new. Well, I don't know if he called it the plays. You got a new oh, guy that called plays that you got coming in. Um, you got a bunch of new – you got a receivers that's coming in. You got to get healthy. Chubb got to get healthy. So, it's a lot of things. If everything clicks, yes. I mean, last year told you that you had the talent to go do all of those things. Defense can't just have a bad day. That's all that is. But you got the pieces, Yes. You just got to put it together like he's saying, but we'll see. I, like I said, the first thing you need to do is get healthy. I mean, that's the number one thing. He, you, you heard what he said. He's like, you know, once we get healthy and we right. all get an opportunity to be out there ready to go for a whole season. I'm like, that's a lot of ifs. That's a whole lot of, <laughs> it's a whole lot of just. It's a like, violent game. Yeah, yeah, like I never liked that. That sounds like your mom when she tell you, uh, hey, hey, if I get straight A's, can I get that PlayStation? She say, we'll see. So you know how hard <laughs> you know how hard it is to get straight A's. You talk about we'll see. <laughs> like I need to guarantee written down something. I, I mean, wouldn't you can't guarantee something like that. Oh, uh, look, listen, I'm not saying he can't, but I would I would be refreshed to be like, oh, and listen. The, and the healthy thing is kind of a wash because they weren't healthy last year and they still did a lot of good things. So that's why I'm expecting them to be like, oh. Did you see what they was doing last year? When they, we didn't have, we didn't have none of these doing last year. As soon as I get back on the field, it's a wrap. How I'm pretty teams, sure he thinks that. Let me ask you this. How many teams do you think in the AFC could have a reasonable shot if things go their way, right? Let me pull up my To make the Super Bowl. I'll, I'll give you. Hold on. I, let me look it up. I think there's six teams that are definitely have a shot. Go ahead. Browns, Ravens, Bengals, Bills, Chiefs, Texans. That's my top six. Ravens. Anybody Bengals. arguing with any of those six? Anybody? Say it again. The Bills, the Bills are my least favorite the of the Bills, six. Chiefs, Texans, Bengals, Browns, Ravens. Those six have a legitimate a legi- – now, there's others that you can make a case for, but I'm saying the, I don't think any of those six are debatable, in my opinion. Anybody want to debate? Those. I'll give you those. Those are correct. Those are Earl, correct. Mike, anybody? And I think fringe teams like the Jets and the Chargers. They but those, have a, those we'll get are, to those. those, but those I think those six, is, it's hard to argue against right, any of right, those. Right, right, right. I got, I get that. You agree, Tyvis? I agree with you. Okay. That. Let's talk about some other teams. Do we think they have a legitimate chance if things go their way, they stay healthy, things go their way? Do the Steelers have a chance? Yes. Yeah. I think I would put them in the yes category. Yep. Anybody say no to the Steelers? I mean, they won 10 games with Mason Rudolph, Kenny Pickett, and... Mitch Trubisky Mitch last Trubisky. year. You would think yeah. Justin Fields and Russell Wilson's an upgrade. Yeah. Right? All right, so that's seven teams in the AFC. Jacksonville. No. No. I kind of want to say yes. I do, too. I but still think tr- it's chance Trevor Lawrence is a great quarterback. I, I do, too. I like the <laughs> They're not because they ain't going to win their division. Houston um, is. Yeah. Well, there's three teams in the AFC Cincinnati's North. That are not Cincinnati's back. I'm I want to I'm going to say no. Cincinnati's back. So that well, but then why'd you say yes to the Steelers when they're not likely to win their division? Because I I would pick them over Jacksonville. Okay. If it came down to that last spot, yeah. I would take them over Jacksonville. I'm I'm going to say no on Jacksonville. You're going to say no on Jacksonville. All but right. They're fringe. I, and, and, I, I'm going to say yes. I think there is a scenario Jacksonville can win a Super Bowl. Anybody else with me on a possible yes? I'm not saying it's likely. I'm just saying it's not a million to one shot. I don't think. Anybody else, or am I alone on Jacksonville? Yeah, I think you're alone on that one. Okay. Uh, Indianapolis? No. No. Anybody a yes on Indianapolis? 
The Jets. Aaron uh, Rodgers is healthy. Everything goes right. Yeah. That's they the, give, the they give Mike Williams, yeah. We give the Jets a shot. We're putting the Jets on. Yeah. I am not putting the Jets on. You guys all are. So, I got Jacksonville. You guys got the Jets. So, that's eight teams, we all think. Was that uh, Miami. What about Miami? I like I like I like <laughs> I think you got to say yes to I'm like, saying yes to Miami. I like possible. I like Miami more what are you than asking? I like playoffs or Super Bowl. Could this team get to the Super Bowl? Oh, that Is changes it? a lot. For yes. Me. Well, now what? That's what, what he mean, said since the beginning. Tom. I, th- I, I thought we was just talking the playoffs. Here's what teams. I'm going to say. I'm going to get realistic and hard and tough. To w- to get to the Super that Bowl. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was crazy. Ty, here's what I'm saying. You said something blast? Yeah, I think I think the Browns could be could have a home te- game in the first round, and they could not make the playoffs. Both of those things are possible. And I'm not saying not make the playoffs because they're six and eleven. I'm but, saying it's possible they could finish nine and eight and not make the playoffs. But I, I think what you're and saying, I was saying about sure most of those teams that, outside, that, of, that, especially that, in the North. That's a two-game swing. That's only a two. Like, exactly, it's only a two-game. Like, that's right. You know, so all, all four North teams, in my opinion, could. I like some more than others, but all four of the teams I believe in the North could finish in any spot in the division. I do. I, I believe so too. Mm-hmm. I mean, you I, could I you could pick them in any order, and you're not crazy, in my opinion. So you know, especially if there's some luck there, right? Some team gets lucky. You face teams at the right time. You have better injury luck. Now, who now, knows? Now, is there any way at the end? Now, this is in, in your mind. Is there any way that you would think at the end of the year you would say? Deshaun Watson is the best quarterback in the division last year. I think that's highly unlikely. What percent chance that you can say that he was the best? best. The best quarterback in the division. Percent chance in the AFC North. Uh, I would say 5%. Woo! Really? That's, uh, I'd go higher than I'd that. I'd go higher than that. Woo! You think there's a better than 5% chance he's better than both Lamar and Burrow this year? Yeah. I was going to say between 10 okay. and 15. I was going to go 25. Wow. What do you think, Mike? I said between 10 and 15. G? Well, Lamar has no – Lamar, Zay, he got, I'm, I guess he get more. I'm, a, I'm a Kool-Aid there. drinker. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to say 30%. I'm not saying there's a 5% chance he's going to be good. No, no, I'm no. no, no. 5% 30. chance he's going to be, be better than it. both I, of I, those I, guys. 20, I got 25%. I say 30. The only reason, you know, <laughs> 70 is a lot. <laughs> like 70 yeah. is a slam dunk. <laughs> The only reason I'm saying that kind of is this. Like, okay, Joe Burrow, let's be clear. He often coming off in. Joe Burrow, I don't like that little – I don't like that – I don't like how the fact he couldn't throw and his wrist was limp. I don't like that. <laughs> like, I don't like it either. <laughs> like, I don't – like, when he was – when he had that RoboCop a bowling sleeve on, I was like, what's going on? And he could – I was like, man, look, at what point are you going to say Burrow's injury prone too? If he gets hurt again this year, then he goes into that category. No, I think he already in that category. He's I missed, he's he's in missed category every preseason. Ben Roxelberger? He's missed every preseason. I forgot about the You're preseason right. game. That's, that's, he, I forgot that's, about, that's injury, injury bro. I forgot about the Cavs. He's missed regular season games in two out of four years. <laughs> I, I I forgot that, about the Cavs. That's injury, injury. bro. Yeah. The, the calf injury was it, like, I'm like, okay, he'll get better with that. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why I, I, I don't really go that difficult and go that hard against, against people that want to say, that, you know, they, they leery of Deshaun Watson with injuries is because of this. Anytime you got anything on your throwing arm that hurt, I, I just get freaked out by that. You know, like when you look at his shoulder, nobody has had it yeah, before. Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't know about but the, the the Watson injury is more unique than yeah, the Joe Burrow yeah, injury. Yes. That's the so, – yeah, so, But, yeah, I mean, if you want to argue that Joe Burrow's injury prone, to me, if he gets injured again this year, I'd put him into that category. I'm not there yet. But it's not unfair to call him injury prone, and, yeah. And, and, and so unfair. the only reason I'm saying that I, I can see thirty yeah. percent is because I still don't see Lamar Jackson as a. Thriller. Well, Lamar has been a little inconsistent <laughs> yeah, in his career. Yeah, like, he's had I, the two seasons where his MVP was fantastic, and then the two years in between, he was just okay. I well, got if, hurt. If, if Joe Burrow comes right, back, but even before he got hurt those years, he wasn't playing the same level as he's played the last two. If years. it takes you know, him, he also didn't have anybody to throw to. But well, that's game. true. If it takes that's him a little fair. bit to get back, and Joe Burrow ain't in sync the first few games, yeah, and Lamar Jackson is you know a little inconsistent. Offensive line has gotten worse, more sacks. I could see where where Deshaun Watson. 
is is playing good football yeah. and, and can continues to get better each. I think. I just think I've seen a lot more greatness from Joe and Lamar yes, in the last few years, I, than I've, and I haven't seen any from Watson. I personally opinion. think Lamar's numbers ain't gonna be up this year because they gonna. You got Derrick Henry now, so it's like more running. So I think his rushing. I mean, they already ran a lot. Right, but now yeah. like it's gonna be much more effective. I, think. I don't know though. Who I don't think they, the I mean, he's old. I don't think the they want to overdo him. That's what he is. That's just how you do it. Yeah, but you want to keep him fresh for the end of the year, don't he's you? He's been fresh for the end of the year I, for many seasons. I, I, you, for me, his body's like used to that. Now. For me, Lamar Jackson, to me, uh, he has to. I, I'm not very like if we playing the Ravens, I didn't see him mess up too much, and I didn't see him be too erratic. And he uh, did do that. Like I, I'm like I'm not scared to go play the Ravens. Like if you playing a playoff like Mahomes, playoff this new playoff Mahomes go on the road and beat you, <laughs> and don't turn the ball over. But the bottom line is, if you're starting a team right now and your choice is Deshaun Watson or Lamar Jackson, you're taking Lamar Jackson. <laughs> Lamar. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. I mean, and Lamar. you're going to take Joe Burrow. You're going to take, you're gonna take Burrow. Over. Yeah. You're going to take well, that too. That's now, it. now, doesn't mean Watson can't turn that back around. But right now, you'd be crazy to take Watson over either of those guys. That doesn't mean he can't, it can't happen, right? Now, I mean, now, now, I thought Jared Goff's career was done, and now he's become a decent NFL quarterback. Great. But he's a decent, they surrounded him solid with quarterback. Given the totality of skill positions, he, yeah. he mentioned a bunch of those players. You mentioned Chubb, yeah. Judy, uh, and Joku, uh, Mari Cooper, Elijah Moore, <laughs> guys like that. Who 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 has the skill set to the skill position uh, battle? Who's winning that now? What are you talking point? about? So who has the best skill positions? I, I think between he was, who the Browns and the rest of the AFC North. Well, I mean Jamar Chase is still. Chase, I mean, but T Higgins is still yeah, T okay. Higgins. But you, there's other positions that's tied in. Okay, so, running back. All right, let's let's rank. I know we weren't going to go down this road, but we want to go down this road. I'm, <laughs> I'm fine with that. All right, so running back. Let's look at the four teams in the division. Who's number one? Nick Chubb. Chubb. A healthy Nick Chubb. Yeah, but Nick Chubb's not healthy. We don't know where he is right now. True. But you I gotta was, factor that in. I was just get, if we, it, so I'm okay. guessing we get so, regular Nick Chubb. If you get regular Nick Chubb, then of course he's one. <laughs> I'm gonna take Nick Chubb. Yeah. But, but I could argue <clears throat> that the Steelers' backfield right now you might rather have because they got two. obviously neither of those guys is as good as Chubb, but they're two good backs and they're younger and healthier. I take Derrick Henry and Keaton Mitchell. <laughs> Derrick Henry's old. It's possibly goes off the cliff this it's year. De- what was his? How many yards he rushed for last 1100. year? He had 1,100 yards last year. But it, wasn't it his lowest <laughs> yards per carry in a long time? Yes. So what? I'm gonna go. He got you 1,100 yards. So so Trap you team. so you. Take I don't him. even think Najee Harris smelled 1,100 yards. Did he? Because they're splitting carries. Na- Najee had close to 11. Oh, yeah, oh okay. Oh, okay. Probably a lot less carries than okay. Derrick Henry. Najee had 1,035 yards and eight touchdowns on 255 attempts. Derrick Henry had 1,067, so closer to 12 than 11. What did Warren, what did Warren on have? On 280. What did Warren have? And Jason <laughs> Warren. How many more carries did, did Henry have versus, uh, uh, what's his name? About 40. Okay, 40 more That's carries. Not that and big Jalen of Warren difference. added 800 yards and four touchdowns. On how many carries? 149. 800 yards on 149 Keith carries. Mitchell only played in like four games. He I, had like four I, touchdowns. I'm going to say. You can vote for him. I, I hey, listen. I'm, it's pretty close. The yeah, Bengals, I put. Who, who are you voting for? Pick your team. What's that? Running backs. Pick your team. Let's go. I got Browns. Oh, I got the Browns. What am I, assu- Nick Chubb am I assuming health with Chubb or yep. no? However you want to take. Whatever this. we have right now, it's close between them and, and the Ravens. But I think I'm, all three are close. I, I like <laughs> the. I like them too. But I, I'm. I'm go- the Bengals is last. But the Bengals are last. But they're not bad either. But it's just definitely pick, like, I'm just not big go old Moss. Okay. I would go right now. I hate, I, I'm going to go the Browns one, Steelers two, Ravens three, mm-hmm. Bengals four. Okay. I'm going Browns one, Ravens two, Steelers three. I got Ravens Browns two. one. Uh, I'm going to have to go with the Steelers two. I just talked myself out of the Ravens. Ravens <laughs> three and the uh, Bengals four. Receivers. Uh, is anyone going to argue that the Bengals no, are Bengals one? are one. One. And tight end. I mean, if obviously if they end up trading Higgins, it but, changes. But wait, yeah. tight end. Ooh, I would well, hold on. So we got to do the rest of the order. In okay, the, so in you the got wide receiver. So Bengals one. Who's two? Browns. Are you sure about that? 
Yes. Yeah, I'm actually take the Browns one. That's crazy. You taking Pickens or Cooper? Cooper. I would say you Pick- think Cooper's still going to be better than Pick- Pickens this year. Yep. Who's the Steelers' number two receiver? Well, they traded, they Deontay, traded Johnson. Deontay Johnson. No, I know that, but who's their number Calvin two? Austin? Nah, they'll draft somebody. But right. I got the I got the, I'll give yeah, me the I would Browns. go Browns too. We can't over high they, I mean, they signed Van Jefferson. He's their number two right now. I mean, Browns Jerry Judy is hasn't too. Much, let's be Browns, fair about but it. Too. But I would take the Steelers too. I mean, the Browns too. I got the Browns too. And uh, I would take Steelers, the Steelers three, three Ravens the, four. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, tight ends. Tight end. I'm oh, go. Mark Andrews. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with. Uh, healthy, Mark hey, whoa, 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 whoa. healthy Mark Andrews. Uh, yeah, come on, stop it. Don't stop, do that, bro. Don't, don't do be that, that. bro. I they, like. I know the Joku went man, crazy. Joku yeah, went Andrews crazy. Career, he stop. went crazy at the end of the year, bull. I love him. I love him too. He's but definitely. He's, but, he's, he's a close second hey, for but, sure. But they got likely too, so I like yeah. like Andrews go likely. <laughs> he do that. I got all about him. Ravens one. Ravens one. Browns two. Browns two. Browns two. I Steelers Steelers. three. Although I like, I think Mike Gusecki is going to be good with the Bengals. <laughs> Solid. He <laughs> could be better than Friar Muth, but I'd have to go Steelers three, Bengals four. Yes. Yes. Okay. So what does that tell us all total? I don't know what it tells us. So it's a giant jumble line. We'll do a little more in-depth on that yeah. uh, coming up in a few weeks. Yeah. But real quick, before we move on to the Russell Wilson-Justin Fields pairing in Pittsburgh, Deshaun said they have the pieces to win a Super Bowl. Yes or no, do you guys agree with Deshaun Watson? Yes. Yeah, they all. The biggest question mark is it's him. him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got the That's why I think. <laughs> That's why he said, "Yeah, like yeah. he he know it's on him." Like if he plays any, forget about playing better than Burrow, Lamar Jackson. If he plays anywhere in the ballpark of them, the Browns could definitely win the Super Bowl. That's and that's the e- thing. Even if he's the third best, but it's close. If he's the fifth, it don't best. matter. Even like no, I'm saying third best in the division. Okay, but, I'm, and but if he's close. Like if he, then yeah, that that's good enough. If he's a top ten quarterback, <coughs> the Browns have a, as good a shot as any. Yes. I think the Browns, not if we just judged every team in the NFL, not including their quarterbacks, rest of the roster, Browns are top five in the league. You talking about just roster? Just roster, not including quarterbacks. Yes. Are top five. That's, so if that's Deshaun been Watson, the case. That was the case last year. Right. But they, they didn't have top 10 quarterback play at any no. point. No. No. If they get top 10, I'm not even asking for top five. If they get top 10, top 12, whatever. You know what I mean? Wherever you put that line. If they get that kind of quarterback play this year, which certainly Deshaun Watson you think is still capable of, then they can win a Super Bowl. Outside if of, they don't, they won't. Outside sure. of Deshaun, my biggest outside of the injuries from Deshaun and Nick, yeah. my biggest concern is the offensive line. We'll talk that at another well, point. Speaking of quarterback play, yeah. though, Tyvis, the Steelers made another move, and we'll tell you about it in one sec. Let's say goodbye to your busting brackets. Because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even... Gee, what the hell are you doing? He's got to go... He's got to run off set for a minute. Okay. Uh, you can even... Kill his mic. Yeah, you can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and bet on college. He's got to deal with a personal matter. Until they cut the nets down. Uh, yeah, G's going to use the bathroom while he comes back from the bathroom. Let's talk real quick. The That's Steelers, we had, we had done the topic. Would you be more afraid of the Steelers with Russell Wilson or Justin Fields? Well, they got both. Yeah. They traded a conditional sixth-round pick for Justin Fields. How do you guys look at that move? Yeah. How it changes how you view the Pittsburgh Steelers? I, mean, uh, I like it for the Steelers standpoint. I mean, you, got, I, you went from quarterbacks that nobody, nobody, you really couldn't win a lot of games with. To, you got one that takes care of the football, that's a great leader, and you got one that's very athletic. Um, I think that they, the Justin Fields sign or trade to me makes it seem like they want to work with him, develop him, get him behind a guy. Because right now, a lot of people say that Justin Fields' worst problem is that he can't go from his second read to – I mean, his first read to his second read to his check down. He goes one read, and then he's out, which I blame it on the offensive line, but you can blame yeah. it on that. His is production. that a thing that you think quarterbacks can get better at? Or yeah. is that just a natural thing you I think, have and you don't? I think that you can get better at it. If you, if you know you're protected – like, for his first couple of years, yeah, he only had a chance to look at one dude and he had to take off running. I think if you more protected, know that you can sit in the pocket and go, because I don't think it's hard to know. Maybe, you know what, that's a lie. Yes, it is hard to know. You got to come out there and say, okay, they in this coverage. All right, so now that I know that they in cover two, my first read on this play is this. All right, hike. 
First read. All right, first read is taken away. Second read. Second read ain't there. All right, check it down or take off with it. I think if you got the protection and you know that you not going to get hit, you'll be able to do those things. But if it's in the back of your mind, like I only got like two seconds to get rid of this ball, mm-hmm. no, you're not going to do that. So I think if Pittsburgh get their offense aligned together and show him he gets the trust from them or he trusts them to do their job, I think he can be better than that. Um, I know a lot of people are like, well, he doesn't, he's not consistent on his arm, but he does have the talent, the arm talent to make the throws because he's done it. I think the consistency comes from him being more comfortable in the pocket, yeah. quite frankly. I, got, I watched him at Ohio State when he had a really good offensive line. He stood in the pocket and he made some really good throws. I think he kind of, his career kind of fell into him becoming this scrambling quarterback because of him not having the offensive line, which is good for him because now that when he goes out there, people, defensive coordinator is going to say, or defense's period is going to say, hey, we got to spot this kid because he's a runner. But if he stands, I can stand in the pocket and show you my arm talent and make those passes, now you got the dual threat thing going off, and that makes you that much more dangerous. You know, <laughs> this man. I, I thought, I got to say, I tweeted yesterday about, you know, the Steelers quarterback room, and that's, I mean, so much better than it was. Yes. Here. I mean, Justin Fields is going to be their backup, and he's a, a good deal better than any of the three guys they had, in my opinion. I agree. And I was really surprised that there were a lot of Browns fans kind of embarrassing themselves on Twitter. What they say? They were like, well, the, the, the Broncos gave away Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, and they could only get a sixth-round pick. They, the Steelers aren't really that much better. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, they Here's are. Here's the thing. The Steelers didn't have a legitimate starting quarterback on their roster, right? They didn't. That's, yeah. Russell Wilson, whatever you think of Russ, he is a legitimate <laughs> starting quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. You think he's number 12. You think he's number 18. You think he's number 20. I don't care. He's a legitimate starting mid-tier quarterback in the NFL on a perfect team because they like to run the ball, mm-hmm. and Russell Wilson's at his best. When they got a good run. When he's got attack. a good defense and a good running game. Well, the Steelers have a good defense and a good running game. Yep. So he's a perfect fit. And Justin Fields still has a chance. You could debate what percentage. I would say a small percentage. But I think there's at least a chance that he could still be a very good NFL quarterback. Mm-hmm. I like it. And that he's just been with the wrong team and the wrong coaches. And then if he had the right coach. Now, we know Mike Tomlin's a great coach. But Mike Tomlin's not an offensive guy. Right. So he's not going to get the most out of And Justin that's Fields. the biggest thing because Arthur Smith is the OC, right? Yes. And he butchered the Desmond Ritter thing in yes. Atlanta. Now, Justin Fields is more talented. I than agree with Ritter, that. Yes. But, but he, still, he handled that offense pretty poorly. Yeah. He, I, I, you know, I go back to this. You, you'll remember back in the day when they had Cordell Stewart. Yeah, sure. Um, And they were mixing them, mixing them kind of in. Charlie Batch and uh, Tommy Maddox. Yeah, with, with Tommy Maddox. Yeah. And. They're going to go back to that game plan, man. And I just don't <laughs> – man, I just don't p- think people understand. It's going to be like trail mix when you're dealing with the Steelers now. Like, they got a quarterback. If you go back and watch what um, Russell Wilson did against the Browns last year, he that checked. team was not very good offensively. But you saw what Russell Wilson was able to do. He, he was able to get people in play action. They was He was keeping the ball on certain plays. He was audible. And he audible uh, into this one play where basically he just walked. People's walking almost into the end zone. He's going to be able to do that. And, and it's a lot of people. I don't understand it. Maybe you could tell me. I, besides the fact that Russell Wilson is like, uh, you know, a light skinned, pretty looking dude, and his wife is bad, <laughs> his wife is hot. People love hating on they him. They love hating on this man. It's weird. And it's crazy, like when they talk about the off field stuff. What off field stuff? What, he go to church three times a week? What, what off field stuff? I don't, I'm confused. It is strange. It, it's like. They say he's corny. So, so, so what? what? Like, I mean, I ain't saying he's, he is corny, but who cares? <laughs> do you want him to be a shooter? You guys, you guys gotta make <laughs> yourself like you want him to be a shooter. Do you, do you want him to put guns on the on the on the car seat, or do you want him to be corny? Do you want him to be? You, a, are you asking me? I'm asking the world. Well, I don't have a problem with him. All, I'm, you all I'm saying is <laughs> he's a great guy. He's, he's going, a really great guy. He's going to come in there, and they're going to let the Steelers be the Steelers. Mike Tomlin going to have his little peacock struck going up and down with the aviators and the dog tags and talk about the 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 the, 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 <laughs> the measurement of the Steelers. That it is what it is. We need guys to carry it on. Like these dudes, 
got a solid defense. They got a decent little receiver. They've improved. Court. They added two safeties, a corner, and they Patrick Queen at linebacker. They right back to their what only they weakness do. is their depth at wide receiver. There. I can't remember Make who they. Fitzpatrick? No, no, no. No, they added. They added. They Deshaun did. Elliott. Deshaun, Deshaun Elliott. Right. That's Plus, they added Queen. The they nigga traded, Stone? They got a. No, Stone went to the Bengals. Okay. And they went and they added a Dante corner Jackson. in the Dante trade. Dante Jackson. Right. Who's who a good just player. Resigned by he the are a decent. But it's better. They had nobody True. in that spot. Well, Pat Pete was an agent. Pat Pete. They went to the yeah, playoffs right. with no-name gangsters. Right. And to me. It's the best still team in five, six years, I think. A, a lot. And they're going to Well, get, Mike Tomlin going to get the best out of them. And, they're gonna, so. and, and so even when, even when if Russell doesn't do nothing, they got another dude with upside behind them. That's right. And you know they're going to, like, what's their weakness? Well, they only have one good wide receiver. Well, they're going to draft a wide receiver in the no, first round. No, their weakness is probably their offensive line still. But it was a little better last year. It's towards yeah, the end. Of the it's not they great. had a dude. What the dude grayed out against Miles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was, was terrible. terrible. He well, got the you, worst. A lot of guys thing. have graded out bad he against Miles. He got the Miles worst now. grade in PFF history. Let me ask you guys this. I put yeah. this in a, a poll. When I heard the news, I was like, oh, it's a good move for the Steelers, but they still have the worst quarterback room in the AFC North. Like, I didn't think that put them over the Browns and or Baltimore or Cincinnati. I don't know if that's true. Who's Lamar? Well, I asked the chat, and I asked the chat simply, do the Steelers still have the worst quarterback room in the AFC North? 49% says yes, 51% now says no. Ooh, Actually, wow. it's, this poll's still going on. It's a dead even 50-50 split. Who's Lamar's backup? Nobody. Nobody. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. The backup is... You got, when, when most, you say quarterback room, you, you have to take room, it. You're mostly judging on the starter. That's no, 90% of the judge. Joe Flacco yes. says that for you? The backup breaks the tie to me. Exactly, guys are yeah, close. yeah. But you can't tell me for sure that Deshaun Watson's going to be better than Russell Wilson this year. Russell Wilson was better than the You Sean can't tell me here. for sure that Joe Burrow's going to be better than, I, than I, Russell Wilson. Of this course year. I can't, but it's, I, it's I, like, I feel like I'm going to keep it real. Yeah. I like James, James Winston. I like James Winston. <laughs> like, this dude got this dude was the first overall pick. Now, granted, he threw 40 t- 30 touchdowns and 30 picks, right? In a very like in a in a very controlled situation. These numbers isn't bad, man. Like 150 and, and 100, yeah, that's, you know, almost 150 touchdowns to 100 interceptions. Yeah. Completion percentage is okay. Quarterback rating is okay. Uh-huh. But here's the thing. When you got Jameis Winston, Jameis, here's how I like my quarter, backup quarterbacks. I don't like game manager backup quarterbacks. I want somebody that can give me a splash, like Joe Flacco. I mean, he's Jameis is really like Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yes, I like That's them type dudes. In a cup for a couple of game stretch, he's fine. He, he I can don't like him playing a whole year. To, to be honest with you, he he reminds me of Joe Flacco. I mean, it's literally he yeah. come in there and right. he, he, I'm playing with house money. Which yeah. one? Let's sling this rock. I ain't worried about he it. Is never if I throw a pick, who cares? I'm is gonna he sling Joe this. Flacco. <laughs> 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 this, is why. This, this is why that was very cheesy that was very cheesy that was a that was like that should be on uh watch the guys on channel three who do their dad jokes every morning that's kind of all those oh, dad jokes that are not funny uh, the weather guy chud and uh and the weather guy matt, I think matt yeah matt wins yeah matt they do wins. all those you know dad jokes. but it's literally we like them though it's literally the same i know thing. i'm just kidding like, it's, it's you know cheesy funny you need a guy that's gonna come in there that's gonna throw that could throw touchdowns he might throw a couple picks but he still can win you a game yeah. because you're not when he walks in there it's not like man we can't call this or this or that no that's not the case he he can, he'll throw whatever you want him yes. to throw like X, let it fly x cowboy five <laughs> flip z Go on two. Hey, backside. Don't be. Don't, don't and by the way, it. you might get this ball. Unlike Jason, uh, if the Browns are up forty in the fourth quarter and Jameis wants to throw a touchdown, to somebody, I, I don't, don't give a rap. Hey, I'm listen, a- listen. <laughs> you got the right folks now, <laughs> Jameis. Yeah, you got I'm the right on ones. I'm about to say because they show sure would be like Jameis. Yeah. Hey, I'm trying to get this bonus at the end of the year. What's going Shoot, on? You're gonna be like bonus. for real? Come on. That's a whole thirty minutes of content. <laughs> McNug- Damn McNug- right. McNuggets can get seventeen questions out of that one. Oh my God. <laughs> James is the type of guy that you DM him before the game. Hey, I'm putting a parlay together. Yeah. <laughs> I need up. you to go for two. By the way, <laughs> I got you. By the way, <laughs> I, I, you. I, I think if, if James throws a touchdown in that situation, Jay is going to like, Jay will lose he, his mind. Oh, oh. He will lose Jason his mind. Jason or Jay? Jay? Well, both, but especially Jay. <laughs> he going to be mad. Jay would lose his mind. You think Jay would be mad if he oh. Oh, yes. Did you just meet him today? 
Ah. What are we gonna do nah. if, it's, if it's a meaningful game? We gotta he ask, just I, checks I, out. You know what? The next week when Jay on the set, we gotta ask him that because I don't oh, think he gets. So I don't think up. he'd be mad about. Oh, that. he would hundred percent. Mike, yes or no? Would, he would Jay be mad? Give me the exact question. I'll, I'll make sure I have an answer for you guys. Browns are winning. 49 to 7. Oh, if he does the victory formation, Ojeo loses that. And he mind. throws a touchdown. Ojeo, and he, he. Jay would lose his Jay would mind. Lose his mind. Hey, lose respect his mind. the game. <laughs> Sportsmanship. Yeah. He would be like that. Yeah, that. I think y'all got Bush Jay me. wrong on this one, oh, man. Because no. Jay will probably be like, you know what? We've been on the tail. We've been on the other side of that There's for so long. There's a 10% long. chance you're <laughs> we the I don't care. There. All depends on the other two people in the panel. I don't know. <laughs> text it to him. <laughs> don't text it. Text it to him. No, we'll don't text it to him. we got to ask him no, we'll, ask, we'll ask him live, but Go he'll ahead, definitely Mike. get mad. All right, we're going to talk Cavs for a sec before we bring on John Fanta to talk all things Cleveland and the NCAA tournament. But if you want to get tickets to a Cavs game, an upcoming Guardians game, even a Browns game next season, there's no reason you should be buying those tickets online anywhere besides game time with killer last-minute deals. All in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes all the guesswork out of buying tickets. The best part is you can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you exe know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Once again, create an account, redeem promo code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Game Time, last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. On Saturday, the Cleveland Cavaliers played the Houston Rockets in a 5 o'clock tip-off. Gee, you snoozed through it. You were taking a nap. But the big or you were afterwards. hammered like Mike. Oh my God! <laughs> what? That wasn't me. Oh, that was her text. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. I missed that. That was part. her. Yes. <laughs> so relax. Well, so, we gotta talk about no, this. No, no, no. We're gonna we're gonna move uh, on. Sorry, go ahead. Get myself in trouble. Sorry, so, guys. I'm uh, in trouble. Sorry. Well, the real news afterwards was Donovan sat out the fourth quarter. He had this quote after the game. He will not play tonight against the Indiana Pacers. Donovan said afterwards, "Quote: No disrespect, Steve. Take tag board full, but I'm really not blowing by people right now." And that's disappointing to me. That's affecting me. I'm probably not playing next game, to be completely honest with you. It has been confirmed he will not play tonight against Indiana. Kind of just take some rest and get it right. I thought I was ready, but I'm not, and it sucks, and I want to be out there. But it's clear as day, even to myself, I can't fool myself. I'll get it right and be ready when the time comes. He's given us no timetable. He's missed seven games total after missing two weeks with the PRP shot in his knee. Guys, how worried are you about Donovan Mitchell's knee and the, the future status of the Cavaliers as they get ready for a playoff push here? How many games is left? They have four, uh, 15 games, including tonight. It's about a month till the playoffs. Uh, hey, I correct. mean, that's concerning because it's, it's too close. I've had this it's before. Getting too close. Uh, you, you know, let's go to our resident knee expert, Garrett Bush. 17 and a half knee surgeries in, 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 in the books. The, the bone bruises, the bone bruise is terrible because when you get the bone bruise, you can feel like certain things. It's like, okay, my knee is just, it feels like it's, it's like got some fluid on it. Bone bruise is like, oh, you feel that. It feel like some people compare it to feeling like what it feels like when you need a knee replacement. Just feels like bone on bone. And it's crazy because he don't got enough game. I didn't have this before. He thought 15 games. When I found out it was a bone bruise and just not no eat, just regular knee situation, I said, oh, they're going to shut him down. Listen, he's not going to be right the rest of the year. Uh, they might as well go ahead and shut him down for the rest of the little 15 oh games. Oh, my God. Uh, and, and I'm not this trying to – This is a disaster. This is, and, and I'm not trying to say, like, oh, I know and I'm an I'm a expert. I'm just going by because I had the injury before and I played football. I didn't have to blow past nobody like he do. Like, yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm coming off the line of scrimmage, but this is all jumping. This is all, uh, all quick twitch stuff. I mean, if he keep trying to play through it, this is going to make it worse. Make it worse. Right. The Cavs have no shot in the playoffs. Whoa. With, with Donovan Mitchell hammered. Oh, okay. No shot. Okay. Whoa. I thought you and, and if he doesn't play, they might as well not show up because they're not going to win a game. Whoa. They're not going to win a game without him. Uh, you think they're they going to win a playoff game without him? Depending on who they play. I don't no, care no, no, who they no, play. No, they're going to no. get smoked. They're, no, they're not, they're no. Not. Without Donovan Mitchell? What? This is a litmus test. Hold on. When they play the, <laughs> when they play the Pacers tonight? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I need to know something because that's who they're like, potentially going to see. Cavs have any chance of winning a playoff series without Donovan Mitchell? No. Series, no. Game, yes. Game, yes? They can win a game, absolutely. Y'all are sick, man. A series, I mean, it's no chance. To be the, no matter who they play, right? Says It'll have to be. No. If they end up playing Orlando in the first round without Donovan, if uh, Darius gets hot and they, they – You think they can win a series with Darius as their I don't best think, player? I don't think Orlando – We don't even – we've seen Mobley. 
We haven't seen him. We don't even hear you play. My man, you know Dean Wade going to get hot for one game and win that. Sam Sam Merrill, who I might not trust an SWB in the playoffs, and Sam Sam Merrill, who Mikey McNuggets tell me might not even be the best shooting Sam no more. Listen, he might get it hot, bro. They're not. This is this is this is painful. It is bad be, because Ugh. what we what we've done. Right it now, sucks. This, this we, is we've kind of we've kind of glazed over this fact, and and yeah. you know. People out here, I hear, I see the comments. Oh, he's so so down on the Cavs. He's so down on it. I mean, you listen. How could you not be? But listen, the Cavs are a secondary team in town. So when you're the secondary team in town, you automatically give the second team the benefit of the doubt because you don't want to seem like you're negative on all the teams. So what you do is adjust it. Like <laughs> ah, I'm adjust my temperature on the Cavs because I don't want them to call me too negative because I'm being realistic about what they're going to do. So you said you negative on the Guardians and Browns. Uh, at times, I'm negative on all three of them. You don't just get no praise for just for the simple fact of being optimistic. That right, ain't right, yeah. the way it worked, man. I'm like, optimistic. I, I, listen, not with this squad. I don't see Mobley. And the fact that Gary, the problem is, the problem is Donovan Mitchell hurt. Again, how many points did Darius Garland have in this Rockets win? Loss. Against the Rockets. Against the Rockets. How many have? Uh, Darius had 12 points. Uh, 12 points. This is what I'm talking about. It, it, but, it, it was, but, but, but you, it was pathetic. But you tell me he hit nine threes against the Bulls. Did you watch that game? No, I went to sleep <laughs> and I woke up and was mad because I had got smoked on my parlay. I woke up and was like, dang, you go, bro. You go, you go I, saw, I saw all them X's, all them little red X's. I got on Twitter. You going to put one in tonight? No, I ain't allowed. I told you I've been Earl, you put one in no, tonight? No, uh-uh. Yeah, I'll put one in. Okay. Hey, I woke up and McNuggets couldn't tell you. I said, what happened? <laughs> I woke up and they got beat by 21 by the Rockets. So, uh, first of all, when you, if you when I watched a little bit of the game, okay, it was it was clear that they was like, it's the Rockets. I think that's what it was. They went out there like, it's Who just the hell the Cavs to say. Just I, I just think that's what it looked like to me. McNuggets was up there just watching it, and I'm just like, it, it just seemed like the Rockets outran, more athletic, and the dude got like three dunks in a row. Like it was just like, it was I, ridiculous. It was not a good game. What I seen, I'm it just like, and then then uh, Mitchell was out there stumbling and hop, hobbling around. It was just, it was bad, man. My, it was my, bad. Thing, my thing is, and I have a problem with this, and this is this is tough. They put in these games where. Everybody <laughs> watched the NBA want to say, oh, that was a scheduled loss. No, nah, bro. No, nah, because they lost to the that. Nets well, and then they lost <clears throat> to the Rockets. That's two terrible like, teams. You, like, you can't, listen, you can't do that. What do you, what do you mean scheduled loss? Like, this is crazy. Then, then, like, how do you expect to get into the playoffs and then be like, oh, we on it popping? We, like, you got to play hard. Like, you, you Wait a minute. We had a whole argument last year. Me and McNuggets was the only two people out here that said the, the Cavs can't just turn it on. They got to They need to play hard. The, yes. Did I say that? Is that crazy to say? No, <laughs> no, that's cool. That, All right. We <laughs> that. We I, you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they no, got to play like they got to play like that to win for the rest of the season. Y'all yeah. like, no, nah, they should rest them. They should rest them. And I'm like, they ain't good enough to really be resting nobody I, like that. I just, I just, it, it's, it's disappointing <laughs> a little bit because I understand like if if I was watching some of these other teams, if I was watching the say for instance Clippers, they got Kawhi. Uh, they got your boy Paul George and they got Harden. If one of those guys is out, I expect Paul George to step up. I expect Harden to step up. If I was looking at the Milwaukee Bucks and Damian Lillard is out, I would expect Giannis to be like, yo, Chris Middleton, what's Did up? Did you see them yesterday? This man, Bobby Portis, dropped 31 points off the bench. Boy, was on fire at the I beginning of the game. I couldn't believe I it. I expect that type of... <laughs> I expect that type of energy from my from my my, my max guy. Yeah, like you saying now you can't have twelve. It might have hurt. Dame had thirty one. You know how embarrassing it is that you thought that they uh, didn't play because it's the Rockets. Think about this for a minute. You know the last time the Cavs <laughs> won a playoff series without LeBron. Did anybody know what year that was? I want to say it's 1992 when they beat the Celtics. Yeah, I was thinking 91. The 92, <laughs> no, 92, 93 season. They beat the Nets in the first round. Trazen Petrovic was in that r- first right. round. Shout out to them. Since winning that series, all right, <laughs> the, the, the Cavs beat the Nets 
in the spring of 1993, three games to two. Since winning that series 31 years ago, how many playoff games have the Cavs won without LeBron? Playoff games, not series, because it's zero. How many playoff games have the Cavs won, including that year, after beating the Nets three? Two? I want to say how many games three. They I want to say they won two <coughs> games when it was when Sean Kemp was there. Three. He's saying three. You're saying two. two. Mike, how many playoff games have the Cavs won, won year, without the LeBron mix. since they won that first round so series against the Nets in 93? Uh, yeah, three. Yeah, it does. I'll say four. They have won three playoff games. <laughs> Ah, that's they not won good. Three I'm happy that play, I got it including right. Including the one last year. <laughs> that's why I so said So the it. one last year in <laughs> the series that they won two. And then, and then there's two other series in the 90s where they lost in the first round three games to one. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. In the second round that year when they went to the next round, they got swept. It's, 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 it's frustrating because. <laughs> this is the worst franchise in the NBA if it's not for LeBron. No, no, no. One pretty of. much. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If it's not for Kyrie. Oh, stop it. Hit the shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hit the biggest. Got zero he hit the wins. Big, you know, I just got into a whole debate about this. Yeah. That he was mad at me because I said that Kyrie is first of all. Shout out Kyrie, game winner was crazy. Left yeah. hand from the free throw line over Jokic, crazy. Anyways, I said that Kyrie was a top five most skilled dude in the NBA, and he was like, "Well, he does. He hasn't won anything." And I said, "Would you take Allen Iverson or Kyrie?" And I said, personally, I would take Kyrie. Because, you, you are way out no, of pocket. No, listen, because you, way out of pocket you, remember, right you remember when we watched AI when he was playing? Okay. And the stuff that he was doing, we'd be like, oh, my God. This Let's ask John Fanta, our buddy, because he's yes. with us. I got to yeah, cut yeah. you off. We're going to bring John on here. I got to yeah. do a read first. And because G. Bush got up during the last FanDuel read, we got to do it again. So, G, please sit still. Hold it in until after the interview here. <laughs> Say goodbye, though, to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. We welcome in now John Fanta, the voice of the Big East, one of the Cleveland most knowledgeable. Zone, Northeast Ohio zone. John! Before you say bull, yeah. I got, we got to do one thing with John okay. real quick. He was on part of my take last week. Phenomenal interview with John Fanta and part of my take. Check it out if you didn't listen. But he told a story that I know none of you guys have heard. So, John, will you do us the kind favor of telling us the story of how you went from a football player to a football broadcaster? A broadcaster in general. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, football broadcaster at first, Mike. And, and, and thank you for, for having me, guys. It's great to be with you. So I went to St. Ignatius High School. Um, I, I went to St. Bernadette Grade School I, uh, in Westlake and was a left guard, a position my dad played. Um, I'll be honest with you, I, I never got into a running back drill or wide receiver drill, although I envied it. Uh, it wasn't going to happen. And when you're in fifth, sixth, seventh grade and you're, you're automatically on the first day of practice getting sent to the sled, it kind of tells you, it kind of tells you where things are going and you just keep going home after practice and eating breaded pork chops for dinner because that's what you're being told to do. Um, so I get to St. Ignatius High School, and I'm like, you know, my dad played there. He wore 64. I got to wear 64. I'm, like, in the locker room fighting for my jersey. I got to wear 64. Well, safe to say I was the only one fighting for that number. Um, so we jump into training camp, and, you know, I'm in my freshman year of high school, Ignatius, and – uh, I get inserted into a game, and, uh, you know, a, a freshman B game at Ignatius. I'm like, this is great. I'm on the left guard. And, um, you know, my quarterback comes in the huddle, and he calls, you know, he's like uh, 20. I'm a left guard. He's like 27 counter on two, and he looks over to me on the left side, and he goes, actually, we're going to run 44 on one, uh, which means <laughs> we're going to go in side of the line on, on this play. We're not going to go with a 27 counter. I get called for a holding. Three <laughs> plays later, I get called for holding. I look at my offensive line coach. I go, Coach, I'm sorry. I go, do you want to take me out? He goes, no. I want to see how long that you can stay in there to see if you'll actually live. <laughs> so, 
it's at those moments when you think to yourself, like, maybe this isn't for me. I get done with my sophomore year, and, and I go, Chuck Kyle does player evaluations for anybody that's about to do varsity. Chuck Kyle, Cleveland legend, as you guys all well know, St. Ignatius High School football coach, 11-time state champion. He calls me into his office. I walk in. It's a Friday morning. I, uh, you know, Fridays at Ignatius, they had some some boxed up donuts. I definitely had a donut at seven thirty. I walk into his office, go, coach. I go, coach, what's happening? You know, I'm in a great mood. And he goes, have a seat. He goes, you know, I'm. I, I gotta tell. I gotta tell you. He goes, you really, really have a talent for speaking. You know, you're you're a lot better at talking about this sport than you are playing it. Oh my God. That's crazy. And I'm on the other side of the room, and I'm thinking, I, I, I went from having a really nice Friday morning to thinking, wow, I am I am really that bad of a football player. <laughs> and it was at that moment, though, that reality check happened, and 10 months later, I was at Fawcett Stadium in the NFL booth calling the OHSA Division One State Championship game, and I had the call as Ignatius won the last time they won a state championship in 2011. They have not won since then. I called that game, and I, I looked down at some of my buddies on the backup line when it was 28 degrees in Canton, and they've all got hand warmers, not going to sniff the field. And I thought, you know what? I turned my partner, Greg, I said, pass me another popcorn from the media food. I'm loving this. This is much better. This is much better than getting called for holdings. Hey, listen, man. You listen. See, oh, this, that's this, a good story. That's what I love, and man. You took that advice. I love it because now you can look at all those nice Sandy Nature's people. And like I'm getting the bag. I'm John Fanner, and I'm calling all the plays. <laughs> oh that's my! A, hey, hey. Find, as you all know, advice to all: find what you're good at yep. and just stay in the damn lane. I, it is great advice. I, now I do want to ask. I do want to ask a question, and this, this is not a backhanded question. How did it? How did this happen? How how did Caitlin Clark become the face of all college basketball? Not just That's women's, true. but hmm. like if it, and I was watching Paul Pierce and, and I was watching uh, uh, Kevin Garnett, and they said if you told if you asked us as NBA players. Who's the best player in college football, college basketball today? I I couldn't tell you. I would just say I, I know who Caitlin Clark is, though. This is amazing. Great question. It's a, it's a it's a tremendous question. So to me, passing Pete Maravich, it, it, it that that is absolutely noteworthy to begin with, uh, to be the all time scorer. She she scores at an incredible rate. Incredible rate, but it's her personality that I think makes her the the greatest of the faces. Right now, I think she's the biggest thing in sports. Um, you you can't watch TV without seeing her in some capacity, and she's earned it. But you know what she is, guys? In a world of divide, she's a terrific American sports story. She's from Iowa. She's from Iowa. She decided to stay home. Back on her on the U seventeen team, back in U seventeen, like the the USA team. Yeah. She got cut. That's she crazy. got oh cut. God. That's crazy. Yeah. She the, the 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 U.S. staff at that level said, "Nah, you know what? We don't have a roster spot for you." Wow. So this is this is the case of someone who at sixteen, seventeen, it hasn't always been you know sunshine and rainbows. She got cut. She faced adversity. Now with players that she got cut. And, and they were put on the team. She's better than all of them. And she stayed in her home state. She didn't go to South Carolina. She didn't go to UConn. She didn't go to Tennessee. She didn't go to Notre Dame. She stayed in her home state. She's made the Iowa brand millions, if not billions of dollars. She's humble. I think she's very humble. A lot, a lot of people, there's some people who do not. I don't know what you're watching here. You're just jealous of how great she is. And we're in a time where the women's game, I call men's and women's games. The women's games, they play four quarters. There's only one timeout a quarter. One. If a team takes a timeout, they go to commercial. If you hit the under five media timeout, they take one, they come back, they play the rest of the quarter, they move on. 
the women's game has a much more watchability factor, mm. and the sport the sport now has shot making that's the best it's ever been. The women's game has evolved. There are co- there are women's coaches who I trust more in how they run their offense more than men's coaches. Now I just think the players have have fully caught on to what's happening. <laughs> And the level of female athletes never been greater. There's never been a better time for it. And you have the ultimate American sports story that's at the forefront of it in Caitlin Clark. Yeah, and according to your network, Fox Sports, the ratings have been better for women's overall, or there's been more viewers on average for women's games than men's, which is, we've never, I don't think we've ever seen that before. And if you're a young girl, you're, you're going to win. This is great. I mean, it really is. It's it's terrific for the sport. It's terrific beyond sport. And she's brought people together. And she's spectacular. And I got to tell you guys, if she makes the Final Four, Cleveland, Ohio is going to get. This is I can't, I'm saying this next to the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland, Ohio will get the most attention as a city in sports this year, more than the Guardians. More than even the Cavaliers, if Caitlin Clark's in that city in the Final Four. Because the amount of live shots, the amount of stage setting, the amount of scene setting, and that ticket price is going to be out the wazoo if Caitlin Clark makes the Final Four. Cleveland, If Caitlin Clark ever won the national championship, Cleveland, Ohio, would be the center stage for one of the great all-time runs, all-time caps to a college career we've ever seen. I mean, I want to move to the men's tournament here, but real quick, that weekend in Cleveland, the women's Final Four, opening day for the Guardians, and the uh, the um, Eclipse. Eclipse. The Eclipse. It's going to be bonkers. There's going to be zillions of people here. John, we got to get to the men's tourney. First of all, what happened to my Johnnies? They didn't get in. <laughs> I thought they were in, John. What happened? That the, is- highest, the highest yeah. net team to not make the NCAA tournament. It, the, the, so the NCAA, for those who don't know, they don't use RPI anymore. They went to this metric called the net. St. John's had the highest net with, without making it. So it's disappointing. They just didn't rack up enough quality wins at them in the non-conference. Yeah, that's, and that's what ended up dooming them. But the committee was bad. The, the, the committee <laughs> the committee misseeded teams left and right. Auburn is top five in the metrics. They won the SEC tournament. They've had a phenomenal season. And they're on the four line? That's crazy. How are you top five in the metrics and you're on the four seed line? Dayton, no disrespect to my flyer faithful. I love you, Dayton. But you didn't beat a single team in the field and you're a seven seed. Florida Atlantic's an eight seed. They have two awful losses. If Florida Atlantic didn't make the final four, would they be an eight seed this year? No. There's a human element to all this stuff. And I thought the committee really screwed some things up. Oh, I'm glad you brought up Florida Atlanta because it brings me to the Ohio State coach search. You know, they decided to go with Jake Diebler over Dusty May. And I wanted to know, do you think that that's the right choice? I do think it's the right choice. I do think that Dusty, to his credit, to his credit, amazing run with Florida Atlantic. But one March Madness, we then equate to he's a legend. Mm. It, you got to pump the brakes a little bit. Like, Shaka Smart led VCU to the Final Four. Remember when VCU went all the way from first four to Final Four? Yep. Shaka Smart hasn't even been to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament since then. That was like yeah. 12 years ago. So you can't always say just because they went on a random NCAA tournament run, that now makes them an unbelievable coach. There's a randomness to uh, the tournament. To me, why did Ohio State hire Jake Diebler? First off, he's cheap. Second off, the players love him. The players love him. I I will tell you when I thought this was possible. Back in December, I did a feature on Bruce Thornton uh, and Bryce Sensabaugh, uh, and I'm, I'm and Roddy Gale. You know, I'm doing a feature on Ohio State and you know uh, and Bryce, what he ended up becoming, but Bruce Thornton and Gale and, and the Buckeyes. And all throughout the feature, they're talking about Coach Diebler. Coach Diebler this, Coach Diebler that. We love Coach Diebler. And in my head, I'm like, wait a minute. Who's the head coach here? Who's the head coach here? Because these guys are talking about the right-hand man like he's the head man. I I think that for Ohio State, I'm okay with this. He he went 6-2. The guy beat Purdue. He's a younger guy. 
the, the, the days of the old timers with the exception of like a Patino, Adam, th those days are over. Yeah. You've got to find the right guy who can manage a roster. This is pro sports now. Forget it, folks. It's no longer amateurism. This is pay for play. This guy's younger. He's got a little bit more of an NBA style to him. I think the players respect and like him. I like that the Buckeyes are giving this guy a shot. I, I do. I, I, I think this is a good move for them. Go Bucks, John. Give me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the long shots. I, I don't care about the blue bloods. I want to see uh, Indiana State Westland getting <laughs> in the Final Four. That's what I want to see. <laughs> but give me, give me the name of a team that 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 is is off the beaten trail, but seriously has the right mix of seniors and leaderships and all those good things that help underdogs advance in the tournament and that could that could cut down the nets. Oh, I'm ready. Mike, Mike Lucas, what was your read? What, what, which, who are you promoting here at the top of this segment? We are, we are a FanDuel partner. So if you want to bet okay. on this, use John's advice and bet it with FanDuel, America's number one sports. And bet it with FanDuel. All right? Here you go, folks. These are your, some of your picks free of charge. We're going to help make Hold you on. some money Let me get right my now. phone. Let, Let me get, get my phone, phone out. Let me get get my... it out. <laughs> get it out. So, so one that I firmly believe in, okay? James Madison mm. to shock Wisconsin. James Madison has a dynamic duo. They're named T.J. Bickerstaff and Terrence Edwards. They're a 12 seed. They can pull it off over Wisconsin. I like New Mexico, the 11 seed. I think James Madison and New Mexico both make the Sweet 16. Yes, Jeez. New Mexico wow. over Clemson. I, I like the Lobos. I like the season that they've had. Richard Pitino's done a great job. Give me Charleston <laughs> over Alabama. Alabama doesn't defend a lick. They don't defend a lick. I like Charleston to pull off the shocker. And I'm going extra shock. The Ivy League. Remember when Princeton beat Arizona last year? And Princeton made the Sweet 16 out of nowhere? The Ivy League is a great league. Yale's going to be ready to surprise Auburn. Give mm. me Yale, the Bulldogs. I think that they pull off an upset. Mm. And I like, remember the name Will Wade? Cheater at LSU? Well, guess what? <laughs> Like everybody else, he got a he, he gets a second chance in life. He has been a coach down at McNeese State. The Cowboys haven't made the NCAA tournament since 2002. They will face a Gonzaga team that I believe is overrated. I like McNeese to pull it off over Gonzaga and wow. knock off the Bulldogs. Wow, this those is are some interesting upsets. McNeese has like 32 wins this year. They've been really, really good. Southland's a frisky conference. Too. Yeah, let me go. With That's the, a parlay uh, picking all those. I'm people. putting it together right, right now. now. Hey, oh, hey. Oh, no. Let's go. Give That's me, a confident John Randall right there. I just need New Give Mexico. Give me Drake over Washington State. Uh, sprinkle Drake? a little bit on. Sprinkle a little bit on Sanford against Kansas. Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCuller for Kansas. Their best two players Drake haven't played. The they're going to. They're going to play this week. But watch out. And if you want to have some fun, the last two years of 15 has beaten a two. Yeah. Just put, just put 50 bucks on any 15 to win. I guarantee you'll have a fun time. Mm. <laughs> now, we talked about all the upsets, John, but I got to say, and maybe it's prisoner of the moment because of what they did to my Johnnies in, in the semifinals. But, man, UConn is just like a machine. Watch it. They all, they're all, every player that plays for that team is so good. Do you think anybody can stop them? Who's that has the best chance of beating them? I, I don't. I think that the, the 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 team with the best chance to beat them is probably Tennessee on the other side of the bracket. Here's why: Tennessee has a bucket getter in Dalton Connect. Rick Barnes' teams defend. The defense was always there, but now he's got a score, an All American score. I think in a rematch, they met North Carolina back in <laughs> December. I think Carolina is a different team now. But, guys, I, I don't see it. I don't see anybody stopping UConn. They're a wagon. Like, if Kentucky gets red hot with their freshmen, maybe. But they don't defend well enough. To me, UConn answers every question. All-American point guard and Tristan Newton. Uh, Donovan Klingon's an elite rim protector, a unicorn. Stefan Castle's a one-and-done freshman who's a stud. Cam Spencer's wired to compete. I just look at the East. Like, I know that Iowa State won the Big 12 tournament. I know that Illinois won the Big 10 tournament. I don't like conference tournament champions in the NCAA tournament first round, second round. I think sometimes when you when you exert yourself a lot the week before in your conference tournament, I don't think it always translates to NCAA tournament success mm. because I think it takes a lot out of you. 
Yeah. UConn is a wagon. They will make the Final Four. I believe they will win the national championship again. By the way, if you're filling out a bracket, we have a UCSS Bracket Challenge group on ESPN. The link is in our YouTube comment. Uh, YouTube comments. It's pinned. It'll be on our community tab. We'll tweet it out as well. So if you want to participate, John, if you want to be a part of this, I'll send you the link too. Feel free to submit your picks there. I do have a question for you though, John. I agree with what you said earlier about the committee just kind of being on acid this week and picking teams in certain seedings, but it felt like they were a little diabolical. Like they picked A&M to play Nebraska on both the men's and women's side right after A&M poached Nebraska's general uh, athletic director, excuse me. They had the PMT connection, James Madison versus Wisconsin in two different situations. It felt like there was a couple of these that were very selectively picked. Do you think the committee actually takes any of those outside factors into consideration when making these first-round matchups? They say they don't, but I, I, I'm sorry. There's too many coincidences within this. You know, they, they're going to say that they don't. Of course they're going to say that they don't. But, I, you know, the NFL schedule makers are going to do things for the ratings. You tell me the NCAA tournament's not going to try to? Uh, I, I just, I, I don't think it's nothing, Mike. I don't think it's everything, you know, that they're always looking for the best matchup. Because if they were, we wouldn't see Virginia in the NCAA tournament. We wouldn't see Boise State. Like, Boise State got in the last four in. That's a crime. That's a crime. Their resume was much better than that. But, like, Boise State, Colorado, Virginia, Colorado State in the first four games in Dayton, those probably aren't going to do great ratings. So it's not everything. It's not everything. But it is worth looking at. Like, there are some things that the committee does. Now, all those committee members are in their 50s and 60s. They don't know what pardon my take is. They've never heard of it. <laughs> uh -huh. but, but there are some coincidences that happen that make you say, what's going on? The A&M Nebraska thing in both brackets, come on, guys. Come on. With the AD situation of, of, yeah. uh, of the, the AD getting, post, uh, getting poached from one school and the other, of course there's a human element here. Like, at the end of the day... We, we say, oh, you know, college football playoff committee, too, like, thank you, guys. Thank you for all of your hard work in this. At the end of the day, they meet in a boardroom, then they go out at night for a ribeye, mashed potatoes, asparagus, <laughs> and a glass of wine. Thank you for your service, committee member. Like, we credit to them for doing their job, but come on. If, hey, Bull, if, Bull, if you told me, Bull, but put Bull back in the two shot. Bull, if, if somebody us if somebody came to us and said hey you guys are going to pick some teams and by the way we'll throw in a medium rare at night i'd be like where do i sign and I'm I, in. Can I split the load and mash with my man tonight after we pick our field of 68 like what the frick? i want the delmonico yeah, i want true. i want the delmonico let's go or, or the rib in rib, <laughs> yeah. a bone in rib no you want the fillet and you know what g bush g bush <laughs> you can come too because we're going on the ncaa black card and, and you we're there gonna, you go we're gonna charge we're going to charge the NCAA's corporate card. We'll That's just right. run up the tab as much as we want. They got all the money in the world. You can tell Tyvis is skinny because the guy, the skinny guys like so, Tyvis and Jay want the filet. The filet. Yes. No Filets real steak disgusting. eater eats filet. The, the filet the is the best filet. cut. You, there's no uh, fat on it. That's the best part. The oh, no, you want the fat. No, you can come that is, I've never ate it's a piece of, of fat. You know, this is the thing. They robbed y'all of <laughs> he steak. He had to take his butt. John, John, listen. They robbed y'all. You know what, Tyvis? Tyvis, enjoy your salad. Enjoy your wonderful <laughs> Italian wedge or whatever the hell you got going on. You're out, you're out you know, of I'm a, I'm a Japanese Wagyu <laughs> filet uh, eater. Yeah. Yeah, nah, 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 all out of your price bracket. That's all out of your price range. Hey, enjoy nah. your avocado toast. <laughs> y'all, listen. John, y'all get robbed of the steak. No, because you gotta cut the we fat off. We get the flavorful no, steaks. You, I eat the fat. Listen, you gotta cut the fat off. And no, the you steak don't. You be eat like it. This big. Let me order. No, you no. Order this big. Give me your steak. Give me your fat. Y'all see? Tyvis goes, I'll have the salmon. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, man. You might be right. <laughs> <laughs> give, me, give me the halibut. Nobody <laughs> is eating the halibut, bro. Tyvis, hey, uh, <laughs> in March Madness terms, you're on my bubble now, buddy. You're on the bubble. Hey. Hey. Kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of. Uh, hey, John, I got one more before we get you out of here. What way would you, like, so right now, you, you look at the tournament. This is the best time for college basketball. It just, it, you know, it don't matter who's in the tournament, what it is, you just going to watch or you're going you gonna to put a little wager down. What way would you change um, the regular season or conference tournaments or anything? Or would you just leave it as is? Because right now, people check out during the regular season. What would you do? I would start the season Thanksgiving week. 
started during when it's feast week because people mm -hmm. watch the Maui. They watch these multi-team yep. events because there's not a ton before mm -hmm. the football Thanksgiving. Capitalize on a window. Start Thanksgiving week. Do not expand the tournament. Do not, do not, do not expand the yes. tournament. Let Greg Sankey and the football people want to expand it. You're already doing stuff to college football. Stay in. Remember when I stayed in my lane with the left guard thing? Mm -hmm. Just stay in your lane. Don't try to impact basketball. It's it, the, the NCAA tournament, you all know this, we're all going to be following schools, some of which we've never watched before on Thursday and Friday, because we love the madness. We love the buzzer beaters. We love the drama. <laughs> don't. If it ain't broke, fellas, don't fix it. Please, do not change the NCAA tournament. They want to expand it to 76 teams, 80 oh. teams. Forget about it. That's Let me tell you, my, uh, I'm going to do one more restaurant reference. If I go to a restaurant and they have 10 menu items, and I look at the menu, I'm like, oh, God, this menu's kind of small. But then I get the dish, and it comes out, and I'm like, wait a minute, this is really good. I'm going to come back here. Wait, that dish is really good, too. I'd rather have a restaurant be great at 10 dishes than have 45 average ones. Uh, we don't need 70 teams. That's, that's, nah, you're right. we, don't need, we don't need 80 teams. Like, let's face it. If we're going to be debating St. John's and this and that and all these bubble teams, you're going to just further dilute the regular season. Please, fo college football, operate as your own thing and let the other college sports function in their NCAA thing because it's the one thing that the NCAA is good at is this tournament. Do not alter I like it. it. I you're like right, it. John. Last thing, real quick. We got 30 seconds because we got to go in a little bit. I know you were. I could. I, I saw you on Twitter today. You're pissed off that the uh, transfer window's opening now. It doesn't make sense. I don't know why they don't wait till the end of the tourney, or at least you're, 30 seconds on why you're so pissed about this. I mean, I'm I know why. Because but the NCAA tournament starts tomorrow with the first four. Right now, there are coaches <laughs> and assistant coaches that have, that have players on their team that are getting calls from teams that aren't in the NCAA tournament, that are That's trying crazy. to get them to transfer to them. That's BS, man. Yeah, that is we... awful. Way to open the transfer portal. That is terrible, terrible, terrible. You're 100% right. Why couldn't they just wait a couple of weeks? What's the big deal? I mean, they, those wait. guys can still transfer. Just wait a couple of weeks. Yeah. I don't understand it. And you got NCAA tournament coaches that are trying to manage their own roster for next year, that are trying to keep kids, and also calling other kids to come play for them next year. That's crazy. Let the NCAA tournament be the great entity it is. Wait on all this off-season crap. Thanks, John. John. You're the best. We, we love John, you, buddy. When you're in Cleveland, you have an open seat. You need to yeah, come, come in for a full with, show. Come down with us next time. We can, get a, we can get a fillet together. No fillets. <laughs> I'm yeah. taking John and Delmonico's and getting big steaks. Yeah, I'll get an avocado, strawberry, mango salad with tiger. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks, John. Appreciate you as always. Thanks, hey, John. John's, uh, man. The best. What the best. I mean, this guy, a young guy still. Hey, what a, hey, he's done, doing great. Hey. Uh, we got two super chats real quick. <laughs> yeah, Both yeah. related to the Mike Vrabel hire. Yeah. Right. Two super chats. First comes from our guy, Kenneth Yabo. Of course. Who says, I think Vrabel was hired to combat the Steelers, hiring Arthur Smith as their OC. No chance. No. Nah. Not at nah. all. <laughs> at all. Uh, no and sense. second, second super chat comes from Vernell Jackson. Stefanski is 0-2 in playoff games. He's replaceable. He got smoked 45-14 in the last game he coached. Extend him for what? He's barely over 500. The heat is on. God, you, that, you, you're going to take it there. <laughs> I, I mean, I get Like, okay, he didn't do well in the playoffs. but he You got a better have... option? Yeah, how about this? How's hey. Mike Vrabel done in the playoffs, by the way? Has he only won one? At what point? At what point in time, dude? I'm I'm just waiting. There's all these He's two and three in his. There's these career. different levels to how we we think about our coaches. If if Stefanski gets to the playoffs and loses, or what? At what point are we going to say he is he oh, a yeah. starter coach? Listen, when the <laughs> Bengals hired Marvin Lewis, right? Yeah. At first, I was like, okay, I've heard of Marvin Lewis, and the Bengals had been crap. The Bengals had been like what the Browns were. Yeah. They had been awful. And then Marvin Lewis started taking him to the playoffs, and I'm like, Marvin Lewis, go Marvin Lewis. Now, they waited too long. Yeah. But event, I was ready to move on from him sooner, but because I was a fan of a team that had been so bad for so long, I was more patient because yeah. I'm like, at least he's getting us to the playoffs, getting to the playoffs. But then eventually there comes a point where you're like, all right, we got to get further than this. Mm -hmm. I, we are not at that point with the fans. <laughs> yeah. Not even close, in my opinion. You can't go to Marvin Lewis length, but – 
it, are, are, they, are they going to start where when is he going to win a play? When is he going to win a playoff game? Yeah. I mean, technically he has credit for one playoff win, but he wasn't there. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we'll see. you know, yeah. so he got the team ready for that week. He did. So, like, come on. Yeah. He got him ready? Yeah. Who's calling him play? His official ABP record was. is one and two. Is a but the play match. calling is overrated. Like, actually, the people that develop the I play call the time, sheet Tyvis. is the person that's been I say it all the, the time. Call, the, Where have you been on the, that? The play is, listen, I told you, it, I got like 30 seconds. I told you, the sheet of paper Duck has every seconds. situation on there. You just pick a play from the situation and call it. Who's calling the sequences, though? What do you mean? The sequences count, right? No. The, why don't the sequences count? I'll be okay, you got to set it up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you, right. you do. You got to set it up. I'm going to do this in the first half and in the second half. I'm going to go instead of running a post. Coming up post in overtime, who shot JFK? That's what the answer? That's how I need the answer in my life. I'm going to set it up. <laughs>